G'day guys, welcome back to the Supercoach Swordplay podcast. It is season four, episode one, the first one for 2024. The boys are back. I'm with my two brothers, Spills and Janice. Boys, how are we going? Pumped for a big season. Round one is gone and away. We'll start off with you, Janeth. How have you been going, legend? Oh, going well, mate. Um, keep my, keeping myself busy. The Blues, Blues are off to a good start. I mean, that's what we like to see. It's not, it's not too often <laughs> you have the Blues 2-0 and on. Brizzy. Oh, and 2 is it, mate? Sorry about that. Don't even like, go there, mate. Please. I'm just like please. I'm just taking, <laughs> taking it as it comes. I think we've won six <laughs> games in a row now by less than six points or less than a goal. It's like I'm, I'm going to be the the world's youngest sort of blood pressure patient or something like this is this isn't <laughs> this isn't good far out That's be <laughs> this isn't great <laughs> so, but no everything everything's well looking forward to a to a big season ahead of sword play we've got a lot we've got a lot in store to give to the viewers as well absolutely we'll talk about that in a sec mate now spilsy how are you going legend the bombers got up over the hawks over steve's boys the other week apart from that what's been going on my man yeah, no, great win, great day at the footy. Um, yeah, went with my um, with my better half boys. It was bloody unreal sitting oh. in punt road end. It was Ooh. absolutely, it was that absolutely was scorching. A new lady, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, breaking a bit of news there. Thought I'd do it on the podcast. Why not? <laughs> oh, oh hey, on, on so, hang on. He's... So I haven't even spoken about this. Very, let's get out of the way. Is this official spills? Oh, here we go. Are you know, no, we're topic already. He's not a bad hey. anymore. Now, Janeth, I reckon this is timed perfectly with a particular Instagram post of Spilsy, maybe with the uh, with the rig out, with the guns out. Is, is that true, Spills? Some guns out, guns out. Yeah, for, uh, yeah, there was a particular pick that we mate t- captured. Um, he's like, I think you need to get some serious shots on the beach. We'll down talk here, or Jan Jook, or whatever it was. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's time. And I fired up, fired up the old Hinge account and chucked a couple of photos up there and um yeah within a couple of days i got me match and then yeah literally on um, i reckon yeah i reckon it was australia day weekend teed up a date and yeah we've been seeing each other ever since oh, and then oh, yeah my official a few weeks ago so yeah boys i'm um, off the market so yeah no nah, she's a she's a good the wedding? can't believe i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> <When's the wedding? laughs> i'll have it on the i'll have it on the podcast how how's that sound <laughs> I've just so excited. I'm going to be Uncle DR yeah. soon and Uncle yeah. Janet. This is, a, this is awesome. I'm excited. Oh, Jesus. Sweet we, can we not. Five, not not five, yet. Spills is rig and Heaney's rig. Oh, there's, there's not much difference. There's not much Come difference. Come on, boys. Right, no, I'm, not co- I'm, not, I'm not copying that. He's, mate, he's as good as a looking bloke as you ever see in the footy. So, yeah, I've got nothing on, on Heaney. And we'll, we'll talk about him later. That's for damn sure. Oh, mate, I'll tell you what, in only only two days, Janet. You see, just mentions that only only the couple of days it took me. So just threw what? that in there as well. Did <laughs> feel, you know, he's not up there for a couple of months. You know, looking through the profile, just my bang. I was taken straight away, away, boys. As soon as I put myself out there, but well, um, they say, don't, <laughs> don't they say still the hinge of the day didn't have design to be deleted? <laughs> I don't. I don't really know about that. I just sort of. I didn't really, didn't really use it too much, and yeah, didn't really have any crash hot photos. So I updated it, and yeah, it's funny. As soon as you put in a little bit of effort, you know, you get that reward, and we see that with Supercoach as well. So it's a really good hey, concept to exactly keep in mind. Exactly right. Exactly right. You put the effort in, and hopefully you'll get the rewards at the end of the day. But boys, before we get into the actual Supercoach side of things, there is a very quick little bit of housekeeping. And I'll tell you what, pretty excited as well. So very, very soon, we will have the official launch of the Supercoach Swordplay website, supercoachswordplay.com, coming very, very soon. However, you can actually visit the website at the moment, chuck in your email, and then you'll get a notification when the official launch is coming about. As I said, we'll be very, very soon. Lots on there. I'm not going to go into all of it now, but... Just a couple of exciting things. We do have some beanies that are on the way, looking fantastic as well, boys. I tell you what, the quality of these beanies, absolutely second to none. Going to have a heap of apparel as well. Super, super exciting there. And apart from this website, boys, which will be launched very, very soon, we are also getting on Spotify. So a big official welcome to our Spotify listeners. This was due to popular demands. We used to have messages every week. When are you guys getting on Spotify? You know, get with the times. We've been purely on YouTube, more of a visual type podcast here. So we do need to keep that in mind. 
um, now the fact that we are catering to an audio only audience as well, fellas. So when we get the tables up in the upcoming potties, definitely let's keep that in mind. But welcome to all the Spotify listeners. It'd be great if you could give us a review as well. Obviously pretty new to Spotify, so maybe a little bit hard to uh, find us at the moment with all the other legendary content out there. So give us a like if you can. I'm someone that never asked for that sort of stuff with the channel, but given the fact we are just making our way onto Spotify, that would be a big <coughs> help. So boys, we are stepping up in the world, but let's oh, yeah. get back this super coach talk and we're going to start off with our round reviews i'll quickly get mine out of the way because i've already put my video out there so feel free to check that out if you want a really detailed review about that one but score wise 2138 for an overall ranking of 38,354. now many people may be spewing with this but remember boys remember back to my my ranking from 2023 absolutely in the dungeons we're talking 90k plus here if you don't mind so 38k I'm, I'm wrapped to be quite honest i'm not disappointed with this at all you know it's a, it's a pretty solid base i think and uh, i think you'll find as well particularly after round one and even up to the you know the first couple of rounds that literally 20 50 points could be 10 20k difference in the ranks as well so don't worry about your round one rank i managed to get a top one ranking last year <laughs> after starting at 90k so you can certainly trade your way in and we'll talk about possibly what to do with your trades this week, how aggressive to be, and possibly try to give you a little bit of advice there. But vice captain for me was Tom Green, a little bit worried after not selecting Nicky D with his 135, but the green machine did come home very, very strong. So all in all, boys, you know, some a bit of the good, bad, and the ugly, like I think many people, lots of hindsight there as well, but uh, pretty solid base just to start with in 2024. Spilsy. How did you go, my man? Did you manage to knock me off or did I get the chockies this week, mate? No, you got the chockies this week. Um, most definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. 2,116. So yeah. Still not, fair. Still fair. Not, still fair, but not great considering, yeah, I couldn't have nailed my captain any better. Um, likewise to you, mate. Yeah. We got Tom Green VC. How good. There was just, yeah, everyone was going day cost. Everyone, no one can wait. It's always a Friday night. You get tempted. <laughs> well, it's a good option, but Tom Green against North Melbourne at home. Yeah, there's no way I'm overlooking that. So that's one of the only things that really went my way. So yeah, I'm ranked 48K. So yeah, just under 50K. As you said, mate, it's it's never the end of the world. When you rank 90, 90 plus K, you make yourself into the top sort of 3K. So I'm pretty confident that I can bring myself back into it, but I, I don't know. It's I'm feeling a bit flat with my super coach at the moment. I know things aren't too bad, but I just look back at my team update that I did. I reckon in January I might have to go back to my YouTube channel. The evidence is there uh, for for those that want to watch it. But this is a this is a this is a team that had bloody Zach Butters, Caleb Sarong, Tom Green was there, um, LDU, Dan Houston. I mean, and yeah, obviously I didn't start these boys, but that was all a reactionary response from the Amy community series, which yeah, was just really frustrating. Got sucked into a lot of selections. Um backed in a backed in a pod. So yes, DR, I went through with um Liberatore, who was actually really good. Like 35 disposals he had. A lot of them were contested. But the most yeah. the most yeah. the most frustrating thing was whenever like he inside handball was just super solid. Like he couldn't have you know in terms of like how he played, couldn't have gone any better. He still looks like the fit liber of old, old but it was just more the unluckiness of the kicks, like hitting up yeah. someone down the wing and just sort of going to a 50-50 contest and then, you know, Melbourne player getting hands on it first. So it was just more yeah. the unluckiness of a of <clears throat> clangers. You, you take a few clangers out and, you know, you're probably looking at a 115. So, look, yeah. Yeah. I think he can respond, but 92, it's not in the world, but, yeah, yeah. you got Zach Bars and LDU, strong. These guys that I really did like as well, just and much highly owned. So when a pod goes wrong, it's sort of sets you back so yeah and then you know obviously i got um dogger and max gorn combo as well um yeah dogger in in f1 so yeah got that link and then yeah grundy wasn't great but yeah just a few players uh zach fish uh yeah zach fisher and nick martin yeah we'll get to them later but yeah not not very happy at all and then yeah you got ollie wines as well who you know was good without being great but yeah very frustrating when you consider his price so just a lot of things i'm not satisfied with it could be worse but just because i didn't get to pick those players i was so hot on over the preseason yeah. just because of getting yeah. sucked in it really sort of brings me down so i'm hoping for a response but look it is what it is definitely going to boost I'm this sure way but 
Sure, though. Hey, yeah. hey, just very quickly, mate. Remember when we were running um, Luke Ryan as well there, the both of us, in the preseason? Exactly, season. mate. Like, yeah, we're getting yeah, on Ryan. We're we're Ryan the wrong. Game style. <laughs> I'm going to change their game style. They're not going to use him. I mean... It was like a week, Dennis. Both of us were like, yeah, we're on the Ryan train. I think we're on the phone. We just talked our way into Luke Ryan for some reason. But this is the thing with hindsight picks. We'll talk about hindsight a little bit later. Janet, though, I've I've got spills so far. I'm hoping that I'm top of the pod this week. Where am I coming? Am I getting the gold or the silver? Maybe next week. I'm just joking. Um, (laughs) Next week, champ. (laughs) 2160. Um, now look, a lot of the a lot of the players from the team review we did, DR stuff stayed solid in there. I did it. I did end up going for Isaac Keen. I just I just couldn't I just couldn't not go without him. Uh, <laughs> Nat Fire from James Harms made way, so it's like one one worked, one didn't. So yeah. lower probabilities. It also meant I got Ollie Dempsey and, and Ollie Dempsey's on field as well. So. Oh, I- Get out of it. Ollie Dempsey Crazy, on mate. field. Ollie Dempsey 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 for a reason. Oh, oh, come on, mate. Easy come Dempsey. on. Um, but not everything works. I in the in the kerfuffle that happened, this is I'll just go full iterative and what happened and so sort of dynamics. Hustway gets dropped unexpectedly. I bring in Sam Berry. I'm like, I'm happy with my team. Thursday night rolls around, Gibkus does his knee. I'm like, oh, geez, here we oh, go. Terrible. I'm going to have to downgrade him. Hard um, mate. Downgrade oh. him to a whore. Next minute, next day, Zach Reed gets injured as well. And you're like, that's my D7 and my D8. But Massimo plays well, and you're like, oh, I need I need like 70K to get Gibkus up to D'Ambrosio. I don't have 70K, so I need to go bury down to someone. And I was never hot on him, this man. I brought in Charlie Lazaro. Um... Absolutely bent, bent backwards by bringing in Lazara. A lot of people have him, but it's like, it's just one of those picks where you're like, you never wanted him, but you just ended up with him. Yeah, yeah. And I can only yeah, blame myself, really. It's like, it's like, geez, look, there's, there's better options. At least there's DPP. At least he'll probably hold his spot. I say probably. Um, and yeah, I guess McKercher was on field. I did VC Nikki D and Nikki Dacos um, and took it. And that was yep. one of the other structural changes is Naismith down to Livingston because that 20K, just saving that and having that loop handy um, just allowed a lot of other things as well. And yeah, I'm just overall happy, but like at the same time with spills. So it feels like a week where you make one trade or you boost. There's no there's no middle ground, really. <laughs> That's so right, isn't Depends it? Depends how you so did. True. If it was anything yeah. like me, you'd be idiotic not to boost. But, yeah, there'd be many that had a good week because there's some bloody good scores. That there's there a lot of players that I don't sport. own that I really want and a lot of terrible scores from players I was never keen on. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, Ran- I'm jumping I'll off. tell you what, Spills. Round zero is just – if there was no – if, if the Giants and the Suns didn't share a buy, the amount of – the amount of oh. coaches that would have a Suns midfielder, that would have Tom Green. You boys are yep. lucky. I'm here like, geez, just get to the round three bye and I can <laughs> I can be saved off a week of seeing Tom Green score 140. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's an animal. And, and the other thing you mentioned there, Janet, and I reckon this would have happened to lots of teams, that Husweight domino effect. It's like we were almost settled. And then it was just, I, I know personally, I was shocked that he wasn't in the 23. Sure, I just had him locked yeah. in at that M8 position, all of a sudden he's not there and you're going, geez, I just, I'd cancelled on him. He wasn't one of those question mark picks for me. I'd, I'd pretty much locked him in. There he is. And after that, I end up without McCurcher with Sam Berry somehow. So these <laughs> things happen, right? But one thing you did mention, right? At the end of the day, no one forces you to pick particular players. You've got to live and die by your own decisions. And that, boys, is going to lead me in to my first rant of 2024. Now, when I was looking to select my original side this year, I was opting for professional AFL footballers. Unfortunately, boys, something happened in the mix here. I don't know if it was JobSeeker or Seek.com.au that, 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 that marked this up for me. But somehow, I managed to get a butcher into my super coach team. And the bloke's name, boys, is Nicholas Martin. Now, not only is the bloke a butcher, but... 
You'd think that with a professional AFL player, you'd come with a little bit of footy IQ. Unfortunately, after viewing this man's game on the weekend, I didn't see much of that either. Now, I consider myself to be a pretty decent sort of a bloke. I don't like to get personal. I'm sure Nick Martin is a lovely, lovely fellow. Spills is an Essendon supporter. I'm sure that you would love to see him on the family days. Get the number on the back there. I'm sure he is a fantastic <laughs> bloke. However, boys, I'm, I'm, I'm no professional footballer myself. You know, I played... Played 250 <clears throat> junior games and may have got to be an F in there somewhere. Most great <laughs> under 11s, I must Go say. On. Apart from that, though, <laughs> no major accomplishments, nothing like Nick Martin. But, boys, even I know, right, that when you've got a contest 25 metres away and it's a two-on-one against, I'm probably thinking to myself, do you know what? I'm looking for another option. <laughs> Nick Martin thought, no, this is going to be good. This is going to be a good decision. Why? I'm not too sure. Now, it wasn't only once. I counted multiple times, Man, multiple I... times. And I don't know what the conditions were like. <laughs> I thought maybe the week before that was an excuse for some poor disposal at times, but but I don't think that was the case. Now, I don't know if this is something that's associated with the Nick Martin pick and this has just gone by me because I've been starry-eyed about this role and moving him back in my defensive line when the DPPs come. I'm really not too sure, but, but watching him play... There was nothing that I liked about the game apart from the role. I thought the role was good. And particularly in the first half, he managed to find a fair bit of the football. But I'm pretty sure that in the first half, he had 18 disposals. And he, he didn't end on too many more after that. I think it might have been two and a third and maybe five in the last. This is all just from memory here. Now, this is because his teammates knew that if we give Mick Martin the ball, they're giving it back to Hawthorne. It was pretty much like that. I got to the point in time where I thought, I don't actually want Martin to get the ball anymore because he's going to just continue to lose points. Let's just call it quits there and and, and just take a rest. Go to the sidelines, mate, because disposal was off. Decision-making was terrible. Fumbly. And I'm even talking about some some five-meter handballs yeah. here. Now, was it just a, a case of round one blues? It just wasn't his week. I really don't know. We don't know what's going on in players' lives. I don't know. So I don't want to judge a man too harshly. But I, I just didn't like what I saw. So Nick Martin, I don't even know if you're going to be in my side at the end of this week. We may talk about that a little bit later. I'm still undecided. But, mate, if you, if you, if you still are, by some miracle, you are on notice. Please, Nick, if you've got an outnumbered situation 25 metres away, at least go for a 55-metre kick. Just go down the line. Get it out of bounds and restart again. Come on, mate. Think about what you're doing. And for the life of me, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to stay calm here. But do something, <laughs> Nick. Do something. Spills, I'm sorry as one of your boys. but No, go ahead, mate. I, I, I don't know. I've got no more words for it. Um, it and it I'm... Just all over the place with how I feel about this pick at the moment. Is it a case of that he he sort of had, you know, when you get when you get all these good emotions, you're like, oh, I'm I'm like, I'm the best kick in the team. I'm I'm him sort of thing. And he's like, I've just got the license to do whatever I want sort of thing. And yeah. he's like, I'm just going to forget completely about what got me into this position as a good footy player with good decision making with good footy. Skills. He kicked five goals on his debut. Like this guy is yeah. a, he's he's a Rolls Royce. And then he comes out in this perfect role. It's not a role thing. It's like t 99 times out of 100, you put an ordinary footy player there and they score 100 in that role. No accountability. Literally, he's getting back the other way. Spills, you probably know this better than I. Dylan Moore was running rings around. He wasn't defending anything. He was defending air. No. Nah. Like Nick Martin, like yeah. it, it's just it's solely an attacking role, like it's the perfect role, and he just he just kept kicking it to the other team, kept kicking it to Hawthorne. Yeah, spilled. What do you, you really think? Is this is this Whoa, is this normal for Martin? Yo, I think it is because like have a look at his disposal against Geelong in the Pracky, like it was horrific. But he saved his score by three goals, which, like, at that position, you're not really banking on the scoreboard. So without the three goals, you're probably yeah. looking at – and he still had, 
well, I think he hit 30 touches or maybe 28 or something. So he didn't – the role was definitely there. He's still got the role. Had a really yeah. big influence in the first half, I thought, but just clangers. I mean, he had 18, but then no, he had nothing in the – nothing at all in the – yeah, no one was even looking for him. No one would even kick yeah. it to him because I feel like they they sort of yeah. knew, like, oh, hang on, he's just – they're looking for um. They're looking for Red Dog a little bit more. And um, McGrath played well, remember. didn't he? Also, I'm, I'm with you, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah there, there may be an extra kick in or two there as well. That's why I'm. That's see, this is this is mm. the issue. Right? You've, you, Redmond's out for the week, right? So Nick Martin gets a few extra kick outs, and that may help to to boost his score up a little bit. But then Redmond's obviously coming back in, and this is this is a big question, right? Because the role is there. That's that's what we want, Janeth. We, we want the role. And the role was absolutely there. But as a player, he just wasn't. So I'm so confused because I love one thing, but I hated the other. Yeah. If the role stays, mm. can he change? That's my big question to ask myself. Can he improve on what he did last week with his decision-making and disposal? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I just got It's just two things on, on that. And, this might this might be somewhat overthinking just because I'm like I was so sold on Martin as a pick that now I'm thinking was he was he really like fool's gold here because you got to think like okay he gave up I didn't I'm, I didn't count but he gave up quite a few number of goals just direct opposition they play Sydney this week you cannot let the likes of Papley um um Papley Wicks those small forwards off Sydney who are very damaging. You can't let them get goal side of you like Martin did against Hawthorne. He did. I had that down in my notes. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And if that means that his role changes, we lose literally everything that there is about the Martin pick. But on the plus side, and this is something that I give in favour of Martin, is it was his first week, first round in a new yeah. role. And so he could have had that rush of blood. You New roles that they mean different things because going from mid going from the wing to half back with more license is a different role from going from half back into the midfield because in the midfield you're naturally hunting the ball sort of thing. Whereas half back you're almost like I've got no pressure here. So on so it's like you're sort of like, oh I I've sort of I can't I'm I've got to do the things I normally do in the midfield in a role where I don't have any pressure. This isn't normal sort of thing. So maybe and this is this may be sort of stretching a little bit but maybe that's what martin needs is just a couple more weeks to acclimatize into this role is, is that do we, do, we, do we give him sure. that though so when, when we've it's got hard. all the price it's rises hard. coming yeah. up quickly that's the big question for lots that of people is, yeah. isn't it do, do we give him to can we actually afford to give this bloke t two to three weeks because we've got other players you even your you crouches your steals and that it's only one week start i understand this you, you took miller types that, that are actually performing well and looking likely to go up in price. Martin, if, if we're giving him three weeks, he's either going to stay stagnant or he could even lose some coin. And in that in that time, we've got other players that could be going up 100 to 150K um, in some circumstances. So it, it, I'm finding this so tough to read. I'd love to give him another week. I think that I will, but I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. But, uh, boys, that was a, a long time we've spent there on, on, on the rant. Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, going back to, to last year, you you did give a little bit of a rant there, a little bit of a bullet, but this week you've got a bit of a, a lighter rant for okay. someone okay. or not not someone, but for maybe a group of people. Let's hear yeah. about your lighthearted rant, mate. This is a, this is the Diet Coke version of, of your rant, <laughs> Sia. This is just directed at the general super coach community. And at times I, I'm not saying that I'm not – are prone to this either and you boys also may be prone to this well but hindsight is a wonderful thing isn't it if i had 2020 vision if i could go back in time and have my team have sarong not have sack fisher not have nick martin pick the right mid prices it's it's the, the the worst word in super coach terms right now and if we if we did a twitter search of the word if <laughs> there would be so many things that would come up if I did this, if I did that, I would be ranked this, I would be ranked that, I would have scored this. It's you can't go back and change time. So I think we just gotta be less 
less worried about what's happened in the past and now consider that this team is what we're going to have to go ahead with. We can't go back and change it. And so I think it's really important that we don't worry. It's just one week's of data. There's players that, okay, you may have backed, you may have had them all preseason and then you didn't have them in that last week before the season started. Just because you picked a play three months ago doesn't mean that you were going to pick them last week. And so that that level of hindsight, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that we just we just pay, we give it too much respect. And now we've got this team. We're going to go ahead with it. I started 84K last year. Um, I had so much hindsight. Why did I do this? Why did I start Naziah Wangani Malera, for instance? And then you end up in the top 1K. We both did DM, so it's like <laughs> hindsight. Let's just forget about it. Look into the future. We've got a team to work with now. It looks good just being able to see and not being able to continually tinker with it. And I think that's something that we just got to go ahead with now and say, okay, this is our team. Let's let's get cracking. I think that's a fantastic message, mate. So I like that. The old time. Not so much a rant. rant. It's, it's no, not exactly like a rant. It, I like it. I liked it. Just yeah. um, what the hell is Bill's doing here? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> where, where has he gone? <laughs> for, the, for the audio listeners, uh, we, we've obviously got the cameras on here. Jonathan and myself are at the top of the screen. Now, Spilsy has absolutely disappeared on us, and it looks like he is inside some sort of a genie lamp. Spills, are you still with us, my friend? Oh, sure am, boys. No, I'm still here. Yeah, just, just locked away in the little temple. Don't mind me. Where are you, mate? Where have you gone to? No, I've evaporated, boys. Evaporated into what is the first Supercoach sacrifice for 2024. <laughs> and what a bloody sacrifice it is. It sacrificed every single pick that you had in your team, every single four line player. Get rid of him and prioritize this man, Isaac Heaney. This is the yeah, I, I dream of Heaney. So we're bringing back the sacrifice. The magic egg, it's back DR, reminiscent from 2021, I want to say. So I'm going to be rolling with this for a while, so it's just whatever. I'm invisible now, but, yeah, it's just, just the, the magic of the Heaney scoring. <laughs> I love it, mate. You brought the egg back. Now, I'm not sure if the egg was uh, good luck or bad luck last time, what sort of an omen the egg actually is, but, mate, <laughs> I, I love the background there. It actually looks really chilled out. So, uh, but, mate... Mm. How, how was uh, he's back? He's just teleported back um, with the egg there. That is elite, Spills. That is absolutely elite. Just went on a on a bit of a mini journey there. But uh, Spills, I was with you on this journey. It was it was so good. It was so fun watching this man go about his work. And I think just recently, it might have been just today. I think there was a, a quote that came out from Horse Longmire saying that even pre season, I was actually planning on playing Heaney a fair bit in the midfield as well. Yeah. And I think awesome. the big difference now, well, the way that I'm doing the Heaney pick, I thought this was just going to be a really quick flip by see you later, son. But now I am seriously, seriously contemplating just, just keeping the bloke in my side because yeah. why would you at the moment Whoa. not want him in your team? And for non-owners, I absolutely agree with mm -hmm. you, mate. I think he should be a high priority for you this week. He's a really fun owner as well. And oh, I'll tell so you what, cool. my so tip cool. at the moment, and I don't think this is a big call after the first two weeks, but I think it might be a big call if you look at talking the season as a whole. Uh, here's my tip for the Brownlow medal this year, Isaac Keeney. I think Your he can Brownlow medalist. Yeah, You're even when he's back. Wow. I, I think, I, I really do, I think that Sydney are going to be a really strong side this year. And I think that he's going to be the biggest contributor to their success. This bloke in that midfield role is an absolute animal. It's and really unlike good. other midfielders, when he rests forward, that's arguably his best position. So it's not like he's resting there. Like, he's the main man. The so wherever Isaac Heaney roams on the field, he's going to be the main man. Whether that's in midfield or forward, he's going to be the best player and the best option there for me. So yeah. absolutely love that, Spills. Sacrificing an egg for Heaney. Beautiful, and mate. Just, just to add with that, he, he's entering. This is his prime. He's... 28 he's he's just been on that fringe like i remember in, in the elimination final last year one it was actually ross and he, he ross messages me he's like tell me a difference between jade gresham and isaac heaney because i think heaney had like five touches in the elimination final against us and it's like 
he, mm. he don't have an argument because he he was he just wasn't showing up. But this Isaac Heaney and Jay Gresham is like two polar opposite. They're like, geez, if, if this is the Isaac Heaney that Sydney gets every every week, he could win a Brownlow. Yeah. Oh, it's it going to be really like, hard to trade him, I think, with his buy. Like, I think someone's got to go, whether it's like Grundy, Jordan, Heaney, like even you know, Dacos okay. as well, which doesn't make things easier. So, like, who goes out of that buy? I think, like, you're probably looking to do an, a ruck upgrade. That's where I reckon that, mm. that'll get Grundy up to, I don't know, a Rowan, maybe a Cherry. Mushroom. I'm not sure. Like, mm. yeah, it's just, just something yeah. more like, yeah. Like, like in terms of his points per what he's whatever his price, I mean, it's bloody not too bad. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna be a really interesting yeah. one. But Isaac Heaney, I don't know if I want to jump off to you. Like, it's just crazy. And oh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not planning to Keep at this going, stage. Mate. He's, he, he's not my plans. And you know, talking about this Heaney compared to Gresham, it's like comparing D'Ambrosio's disposal to uh, to the old Butcher Martins. I think just just whole. <laughs> I think on the weekend, and Massimo's maybe a bloke we'll talk about yeah. when we get to the mailbag, boys. But uh, the next discussion that I wanted to get into, and we, we've sort of talked about this a, a little bit or touched on it, but it's that reactive type trading. So I've just, just got a quick list here, and we're not going to talk about these individually. Remember, I've got the stocky coming out, and we will get to the mailbag very, very shortly. But folks like you, Nick Martin, we've talked about Hayden Young, Zach Fisher, Ollie Wines, Brody Grundy. Lazaro, your Jai Clark, you're those rookie type options that just did not seem to work or did not seem to pop in round one. So what do we think about this, boys? Now, I, I'm finding this very, very hard myself because I'm looking to make some moves this week, but you obviously got to got to trade players out. All the players that you, well, need to trade out or you, you've got the option to, you literally started in your side a week ago. So you're obviously hot on them for, for a reason, unless it was a bit of a, a panic decision. So... Janeth, what do you think about this reactive type trading? Do you think that it's okay to be moving on players after one week's worth of data? I know that some players are in a different position. Some, we've already got the two weeks, being those round zero teams. But particularly for some of the players I mentioned there, they are not round zero teams, so they, they don't have a buy coming up. Yeah. What are your thoughts on trading out these players mm. now? Do you have a particular set rule or do you think it's more circumstantial, mate? What, what can you give us on that one, buddy? I think it is it it is circumstantial, really, because some teams are just really well set up. And just one of the things with the buyers, even in this one, we don't we don't have the luxury of the, the three trades plus the boost. So we'll have a maximum of six trades this week and next. And some teams may just have too many fires to put out next week. Where you'll have to use the three trades that you have to bring forward a couple of trades this week. I've seen teams pulling a Jai Clark to Jack Carroll trigger um, to get Jack Carroll as an emergency loop for this week, just knowing that if Jai Clark keeps playing that way, he's getting dropped and Jack Carroll should play next week. So it's like bringing forward a trade. It's just unheard of, right? But it's just that super coach dynamic where we have so many players we want. That's our needs, and we have so many players we want to discard, and you can't do everything with three trades. So it's it's an interesting dynamic. I'm I'm fully on board selling Sack Fisher. Luke McDonald is back this week. Yes, Josh Goder went down, but did any part of Sack Fisher's game scream to you? I'm going to be a top six forward as a, as a running defender. I'm an accountable defender. I will look after someone. He's going to get kicked out of that role if he keeps playing there. It's the same with Nick Martin. You can't play as a defender just to get free kicks and run around the back and get cheap disposals if you're not going to defend someone. Absolutely. Absolutely, mate. And I'm all on board with Fisher as well. And what, what do we get out of that game? There was just, oh, you know, we talked about even with Nick Martin, if we're comparing the two just very, very quickly, there, there were positives to Martin, like the role, the fact he got the ball. I did not see a positive to that Zach Fisher game. I didn't see a single one there. So for me, very, very much on the chopping block as well, mate. So totally agree there, mate. All right, boys. Now we are getting very, very close to the mailbag. But before we do that, we're each going to give a bit of a hot take here. Now, Spills, I may actually be taking your thunder here, mate. You've gone into the lamp and you've, you've dreamt of being, you've teleported with your egg there. 
But I've, I've got a hot take on <laughs> Isaac Heaney. It depends how hot you, you think this take is. But I think that by round 10, Isaac Heaney will be averaging in the top 10 players in the comp, in the whole competition. Midfielders included, that's your Bont, your Dacos, throw your English in there as well. Anyone you want, by round 10, he'll be averaging in the top 10 for mine. Spills, oh, what's your one, mate? Got a bit of a hot take for us there, buddy? Yeah, no, my, my hot take is, well, the Amy Community Series is just the, like, some, it's probably, I'm not, not really wording it that great, but it's got to be the most overrated thing in Supercoach. I mean, this is two years in a row. Janeth laughs at me, but this is two years in a row where I've faded a, a team update I've done, goes straight back to your if, buts, Janeth. But I think, look at the January team update. It would have, it was nothing would have changed if I hadn't have watched yeah. some vision of Zach Fisher run getting junk off half back <laughs> against St Kilda. I mean, yeah, it's just un, unreal. So, Terrible. yeah, no, I, I just think it's just so you, overrated. Mate. I agree with you. It's, yeah, it it, to, it, you saw we saw it with Flanders and Bruin, even five to an extent last year, and yeah. it just happens again. Um, yeah. Jack Billings was in there. That one was a bit interesting because they didn't stub him out. Round zero. I don't really know why. We will talk come about that feeling in the mailbag for like, sure. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I just it's just really frustrating because you see all these players with the role and at their price in in a line where it's just so difficult to pick someone, and then, well, look at this. Look at the serving of scores. It's just yeah, it's awful. So, yeah, my hot take is that yeah, I take it with a grain of salt. Amy Community series round zero. Back your gut. And two years in a row where I've, pro I've probably got a much better team in January than I do in March. And I put so much effort in. And it, it's quite disappointing, really. Do, do you know what Amy the Amy series has done to us? Have you seen that uh, if there's Julio who's driving down the, the freeway there and then the door <laughs> falls off, the wheel falls off? <laughs> Amy screwed <laughs> what I've screwed Julio. I think with these drinks, there's the game, yeah. boys. You know, then you get oh, the, yeah. car, the motorbike at the end. I've jumped on the motorbike. I think we all have guys with that. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I think everyone's seen the ad with old Julio there. So thanks for nothing, Amy. Spills is not happy. Janeth, you got a hot take for us, mate? I do. I'll just before that, for every Errol Gould and there's a Nick Martin, Sack Fisher, geez, these, oh, gosh, we just get sucked in. Isn't I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. Even even to a lesser degree, it's like a Jaden Short, like perfect halfback yeah. role in, in preseason. Not many own him because of, they've got the early buy. And then he... He shafted on a wing halfway through the game. You're like, what? <laughs> what's, what's going on here? <laughs> I was never biting that bait because that happened to me in 2022. I saw him yeah. in, I think he played in Devonport against the Hawks, had about 35 kicks. Oh, he smashed like it, that. didn't he? Yeah, yeah absolutely that, dominated. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. yeah, he just turned out to be the fakest of fake primos <laughs> ever. Just bleeding Love away, he and Chris bleeding away at D5 and 6. So, yeah, oh, I, I'm, I was getting desperate. sucked in. Like, yeah, I, I think um, Timmy Mitchell was trying to, like, sort of <laughs> pump him up a bit. And I respect that because he's a GOAT. But I've got sort of, I don't know, but I just can't go back there. I'm just traumatised forever. <laughs> PTSD, Jan, that's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah, so, yeah, PTSD from, from Jane Short back in the day, two years ago. Yeah, not not falling, not falling for that one again, boys. I'll give you, I'll give you my hot take, D. And this may not seem overly hot after round one. This may seem like a hindsight thing as well. But James Sisley is not going to be a top ten defender this year. Ten, and there's no, a couple of reasons for this. Top ten, I'm going top, top ten. Yeah, I'm going top not, ten. Not, and yeah, there's there's a couple of reasons for this. Sam Mitchell does not want to unlock James Sisley's game. He did not include Ethan Phillips. <laughs> In the matchup, so it was, it was Frostball, and James Sicily as the two key defenders, and wouldn't you know it, Essendon just knew, just knew that the exact kryptonite to James Sicily is going after him, got right <laughs> under his skin, put a tag on him. The blueprint, oh, the blueprint is so dead in round one. You stop Sicily, you stop Hawthorne. Basically, yep. it's, for Hawthorne, it's the midfield and it's Sicily. If you stop both of them, and Essendon did, you win the game. And he got 43. I think it was on what, like 15 at halftime or something? It was, yeah, it was ridiculously low. Mm. And he's got 196 break even. We may be looking, I know you were 
Dia was saying in a couple of weeks, you just want that that James Sisley 550k to come into your team. If they don't bring Ethan Phillips in, there is a world where we don't see James Sisley actually be able to unlock that hype. Because now with that blueprint, if a coach doesn't do it, you're like, well, what are you doing? Like, why why wouldn't you send someone to Sisley to keep? It'd be negligent him? almost, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would almost be negligent like, not. You're not to do trying it. to and- win the game. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we, we say sometimes a week's long time in football. Remember uh, a couple of months ago, before the, the bunk injury, he was locked in as my D one. He, he and he wasn't he wasn't moving. To be quite honest, I may have moved Nicky D in there to get him down to D two, but there was no world where I thought I'm not starting James Sisley just a little while ago. So these things happen, and that's why you really do need to be up with the news. Look at team structure. It's not just look at break evens and price rises and likely price falls you need to look into all this sort of stuff so that is a real hot take mate and possibly the hot take there as well is that he may not be a particularly relevant selection this year even at the price because i'm with you without phillips mate he's just looking too accountable so can't believe we're saying that about uh, lebron as george would call him but yeah don't know if it's going to be his year in 2024 boys so uh, I think it's probably time to get to the mailbag. Is there anything else that you blokes want to cover before we get to that? Uh, just quickly, a couple of just touch very quickly on some rookies. Yeah, um, good idea. So sort of, if DI, if you want to just talk about some of the rookies that may feature um, in your sort of um, stocky, like I, I know a lot of people are wondering about Tom Berry. Yes, um, well, well. What do we reckon of Tom Berry? I'm not biting the bait, boys. Like, really good scoring, but the role to me just, I don't know if it's sustainable. So I feel like All it's right. sort of point well, chasing. I think the first thing we need to mention here for anyone that, that's not aware of this is that the only blokes whose prices are changing this week are obviously the round zero players. And that's not including mm. Carlton and Brisbane as well, who are obviously on the buy. So yeah. we're talking Sydney, Melbourne, Collingwood. Help me out, boys. Gold Coast, GWS, and Richmond. Melbourne. Oh, do you say Melbourne? Who's and Richmond. No. And Richmond. And Richmond. Yeah, so yeah. They're yeah. the six teams that we're talking about here. So uh, we will we will start with Tommy Berry, my man Tommy. Now, I love this man. You, you know that, uh, well, Jared's actually sipped to my second favourite player now. You know, it's a Pepsi Max <laughs> King. I'm sorry, Bez, but you've been overtaken, mate. I, I do apologise. <laughs> but always had a massive soft spot for Tommy. Um, So he, him as a player, hard as a cat's head. A, a great role player, just a sacrificial type player. It's not about him getting the ball, and that's maybe what you'd be concerned about, Spills. It's about putting that defensive pressure on. So his best role, in my opinion, is that defensive pressure forward. Tackles inside 50 and just be a bit of a maniac down there. Head over the football. You know, that that's the sort of player that Tom Berry is. Now, I know for a fact that Dimmer Hardwick is a big fan of Tom Berry. He's mentioned him personally in a couple of interviews as well. And I do know a couple of blokes that have a little bit of inside word at the Suns. And they said the same thing. Loves Tom Berry as a pick. Now, I think he's actually getting up the ground a little bit more as well. Uh, the first week only had six touches, but did hit the scoreboard. And it's at tackling pressure as well. The good thing with Berry, even if he's not fighting the football, he, he will be tackling it's those one percenters. Mm. And we know with the great Jaden Popowski, Popovsky, I'm sorry, mate, I've probably butchered your name there, that we actually get points in Supercoach for these little acts. People just look at the disposals like your kicks, marks, handballs, etc. But it's these pressure acts, the one percenters, that actually count towards your Supercoach score as well. And that's a bit of a bonus, I think, with your Tommy Berry. But I think given the fact he's pushing up a little bit more, I think he will actually be able to find a little bit more of the football. And really, mate, this, for me, should be a pretty quick flip. He's not a bloke that I'm going to be keeping for your six, seven weeks and thinking, oh, I'll be one of my last upgrades. We want him now while he's got that score in his system. And the best thing is it's in his round two score. So this will count for his next couple of price rises. Obviously, the awkward thing is, and we know with all these players, so I'm just going to say it now without mentioning about every player, you know that they're going to be facing a buy. So that's something that you've got to take into account. What's your structure already like? So if you're someone that's already got, for example, your, your Flanders, your Sexton, your Cadman, which is pretty popular for lots of people, there's three blokes gone there. If you're looking for a bit of a wacky Jesse Hogan move, which I've considered this week, bang, there's another player. Have you got your Tom Greens, your Rails? I know that 
my man Causa started with your Lockie Whitfield, for example. So these are things that you must take into account. But Mila, for me, mate, I actually like the play this week. I like the play of bringing in Tom Berry if you can. I think he's got the lowest break even out of any player. I could be wrong there. I'll get back to the stocky, obviously, uh, tomorrow morning, hopefully. But I just like think Howes. that... Like Howes and then Berry. Yeah. Actually, Howes. Sorry, you're right, mate. And, and I'll actually talk about him next very quickly. But uh, look, with, with Tommy Berry, mate... The role isn't fantastic for Supercoach, but we know what he brings to the table. I wouldn't be expecting hundreds. I'd be more expecting that 60-type average. But given the fact he's got that in his system, I think we jump on now. Unfortunately, he's got to buy, get a few price rises, and then see you later, son. Out you go. If you're not a fan of doing that, however, you could wait another week for Janice Mann in Ollie Dempsey, who's a little bit cheaper, I believe, than Barry. But uh, you, you may be a little bit keener there. You won't can have to I, worry about the buy also. Can I play devil's advocate, dear? Just just so that it, everyone has the full full story. I love everything you just mentioned about Thomas Berry. The one thing I don't like though. So yes, he does have. He has a round three buy. You got one of the next four games that they play on at Metricon or um, there's a they call it something else now the the stadium, but they've got. Basically, one of the next four games on the Gold Coast. You got Bulldogs in Ballarat, no uh, good, GWS yeah. Adelaide Hills, Hawthorne at on the Gold Coast, Sydney at the SCG. That's your next four games. So it's like, so it makes sense that if he's a short term sort of rental that you're looking for, um, that yeah, you you could go there. But after that, West Coast uh, on the Gold Coast. Uh, Brisbane at the Gabba, North in Darwin. So it's like, damn. If you can, if Wouldn't you, you love to get flip through that? Those, if you can get through the next four games and the bye, you've got West Coast, Brisbane, North. So it's like Brisbane. Obviously, they're not going to be. You're not going to be like this leaky um, at that point in the season. Bloody we hope. hope not, mate. You, you hope not. not. But yeah. West Coast and North, you'd more likely. You'd think that they're still going to be as leaky as they are right now. And I feel like TIO Stadium is just one of those games which they got back to back there, North and Geelong at TIO and Darwin. It's just one of those games that suits fairy styles that just the oh, pressure animals out. just tackles yeah, like yeah. ten tackles Magnum in a game. Jewel. No one yeah. can, it's like a bar of soap sort of thing. Absolutely. And so that that's a really good point, Janice. So I like the short term play when we're looking at his price and that break even. But you don't necessarily, you're not falling in love with that short term fixture. I but don't you're like saying the if short you just term. get past that next few games, yes. then it's looking good. So maybe what yeah. we do look to do, as you just mentioned, mate, we, we pick him up, you get through that stage where he's going to be making money anyway, pretty much regardless of what yeah. he scores. And then you think maybe we can keep on to him and that ceiling may even go a little bit higher given his opposition. So. Good advice there, mate. Very much a lot. Like that. Really, it's really hard to read how good Gold Coast is. I think that's Isn't something it? that we've really struggled with. Yeah. It's because you yeah. play Richmond and you play Adelaide. Adelaide away from home is compared to a, a away from home compared to home is like completely different spectrum. So it's like, are Gold Coast for real? Because if they're for real, then all those matchups that we just talked about, Giants at Adelaide Hill, Sydney at the SCG, they're not going to be blowouts. So Barry should still be relevant. And so that's Great just something point. that we're struggling to sort of figure out right now. Yep, love it, mate. Um, I suppose we're on Gold Coast. I wouldn't be interested in Bodie Yulund. I think he's a pretty easy skip at this stage. The other bloke's Alex Sexton. I think most of us have got him now. I've had a couple of people message through pretty disappointed we're not seeing triple figures. I never expected that with Alex Sexton. He's doing his job as a rookie. That's fine. I think people just had a few stars in their eyes after that massive performance. But he's doing the job. I'm not worried about him at all. Um, Blake Howes is the next one. I think he is the bloke that you look to bring in this week over Sam Berry. I think he should be your number one priority. And guess what? If you don't own him, I'm guessing that there's a high possibility that you own one of Gipkus or Reed. That is the easiest trade. Absolutely do it. Go through with it. Uh, you've got Hoare. Now, Hoare didn't play round one, did he? Uh, round, round zero. zero. No, no, so, no. yep. Yeah, so Hoare, you can actually wait a week on. He will not be on the bubble this week, even though he plays for the Ds. Uh, Charlie Dean is another one in our back lines for Collingwood. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this pick. Um, I love the role. Look, job security, I don't think he's fantastic. Pies supporters may be able to correct me with that one. Nathan, but Nathan I would Murphy's be trading to Dean. 
because he's, he's TBC on the injury report. And so uh, just from hearing Collingwood fans, they're just, they're just really unhappy with that defense at the moment. Like that's I really, know. that's the biggest difference I think from their, like last year and this year is like night and day and the defense is set up. And part of it is that Nathan Murphy, he was a rock for them last year. Yeah, Murph, they are, they are certainly missing Murph, aren't they, mate? Mm. Yeah. Uh, look, McRae from Collingwood, just sub. You can't do anything there at the moment. Uh, from Richmond, we've got Seth Campbell. So, obviously, didn't score overly well this week. It was score in the 30s. Small forward for Richmond. I don't think it's a fantastic role. Again, I think he's probably one that we can skip. Uh, James Jordan, not really a rookie, is he? But I think he's a great a great boy. If you don't have him, a fisher down to Jordan, I think he's super easy. Very quick cash there as well. Uh, Matty Roberts, if you don't have Matty Roberts, again, a pretty solid trade-in. Maybe not as fantastic as what we were first thinking, but the role's pretty solid there. I've, I've got no problems if you want to get Matty Roberts in. But I think most teams that I come across anyway do have him. So I don't think he's going to be a massively traded in player given his high ownership. Uh, so I've gone your Sydney, your Richmond, Melbourne. Your Melbourne. Uh, do we do we Windsor. touch on Windsor? Yeah. So I thought that Windsor would be better playing at the MCG on that bigger ground. Got the wider wings there. The only issue that you've got now, I thought great performance, really like the look of him. I think Melbourne have a serious player on their hands here, but unfortunately got subbed out. Now, is, is Goody just going to try to rotate a few of these players around with a sub? We know that we all got pretty screwed with Jack Billings starting as a sub in round zero, but that would be my only slight concern, I suppose, within Windsor Pick. You are paying a little bit extra with that 180-odd type K, but I, I like what I saw from Windsor. I think he'd be a super player, and I think they'll be really keen to, to keep him in the side, and he should play most games, I think, anyway. It fits. Um Giants, uh, yeah. Jacob Ware. Again, I don't yeah. think he's a, a yeah. really high priority. You've got um, Harvey Thomas, Harvey Thomas. as well. Yep. Uh, 117K, so I like the price. He's got that DPP status as well. So, look, if you're looking to add some DPP, maybe into that midfield over a Clark, I could see a world, but I'd much rather just get, just say, a Wilson, chuck him in the midfield and yep. get someone else. So I'm not huge on, on Thomas there. And Cadman, I think that's pretty Cadman. much it. Oh, Cadman, sorry, Aaron Cadman. Yeah. Now, I've started him, and I started him for a reason, knowing that he'd have a pretty solid early draw. Um, yeah. Boys, what are your quick thoughts on Aaron Cadman? So if, if you don't have Aaron Cadman, do you think he's a realistic trading option, or have we missed the boat given the fact that, well, he does have a, a good draw this week, but then he's got the buy, and then the opposition gets a little bit tougher. Janet, you're sort of nodding your head. You don't reckon it's worth buying into yeah, Aaron Yeah, I was going to say, Spills, you can go, but it's just like, I'll bring in Barry if you're going to bring in some. If you're going to bring in a player from round that. three, yeah, by, yeah. yeah. you might have, you miss the North game. You've got the West Coast game, and so you, there's money to be made. But I think just Barry's just had a, a hundred in his price cycle, so it's yeah, it just it just makes more sense. And the 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 dream of Cadman getting rough DPP is very, 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 very low. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think that'll be happening, but hey, <laughs> we can dream. We're dreaming a Heaney at the moment. So why not dream of uh, some ruck DPP for our man cutters as well? But uh, look, I yeah. may have missed the rookie off the top of my head there, but remember the stocky will be out uh, hopefully tomorrow night. So make sure you tune into that. For Bills, is there anything else you want to add on any of them? No, you summed up pretty well. Basically took words out of my mouth about Cadman. I mean, perfect starting pick, I reckon. Um, nice one to have yep. there on your bench. Yep. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't be chasing him now. I think good cash grab. But, yeah, why would you grab Cadman when you can grab Barry with much lower break even and a bit more upside. So, yeah. Absolutely, mate. All right, boys, we are on to the mailbag. So thank you very much to everyone that sent through some questions. I think we've got... 16 here so we'll get through these uh, as quick as we can give you some of the good goss and uh, then we'll finish up with potentially some trades and some captains so i've got engo here a huge supporter of the channel let's go always appreciate your support legend and uh, hope you're enjoying as you're listening so far or watching on youtube good on you engo all the best luck for this week legend uh next one uh, another one of our regulars here it's the duke gown buddy i believe janet you actually met up with the duke at oh. adelaide didn't you mate is that right from memory i didn't meet up with him and i don't want to i'm a bit embarrassed by this but he recognized me 
Oh, is that well, the old look celebrity out. status there? He's just throwing out there, Janet, is he? <laughs> oh, geez, that that was that was a that was unreal. Like, what a jerky, yeah, brilliant, brilliant interaction. That it was at the footy festival. Um, at Gather Round. That's right. That's mental. That's right. Excellent, mate. Well, uh, Dukey, so thank you for funny. sending any question, mate. Now, Duke's got a few options here. And, boys, I can relate to this. I don't know how many scenarios I've run through in my head, <laughs> but uh, I've got much more than A to D. Absolutely. You should finish dead, the mail, though. Yeah, finishing the alphabet spills. Absolutely right, mate. But, uh, <laughs> all right, which we like. <laughs> Option A, we've got Newcomb to – oh, you're getting rid of your mm. boy Nuke already. Losing the faith, but yeah, no, nah, all no. good, mate. So, new to Hogan, Lazaro to Billings, Gipkus to Massimo. Mm -hmm. Don't mind that. Option B, Fisher to Billings, Gipkus to Massimo, 70k in the bank. So, obviously, using a boost for option A, just the two trades for B. We're going back to a boost for C, Fisher to Billings, Gipkus to Massimo, Clark to Berry. And option D, Clark to Bonner, Fisher to Billings. And Gipkus to Massimo. So, um, very quickly, mm -hmm. Massimo's involved in every one of the trades. Yeah. Billings yeah. is involved in every one of the trades. So, D, you're also looking to get Bonner in, and also Berry, who we who we've talked about, as Which well Barry? as Jesse. Is that Hogan. Sam or Thomas? It's got to be Thomas, right? I think I think Tom. Yeah, it has I'm just it. looking at the DPP because you're trading. Fisher is a forward to so Billings has got DPP. Clark is a mid. So it'd be Billings in the midfield, Barry, Thomas Berry as a forward is logic. Logically. Yeah, look, I'm guessing it's I'm guessing it, it's gotta be Tom. I wouldn't be trading into Sam anyway, but let's just assume it's Tom for argument's sake anyway. Um, Janeth, do you have a particular option that you like, mate? A, B, C, or D? There's some similar type options here, as we mentioned, with, with, with your Billings and Massimo types, but is there anything that floats your boat in particular when you're looking at the options? Oh, it's tough. I don't I don't like boosting if you don't upgrade your team. And so... Okay, okay. I would rule out C, Fisher to yeah. Billings, Clark to Berry is cash. So you're boosting for cash, basically. And so it's tough because you can, you can justify it. You really can. Because Billings and Barry will both make cash this week. Mass, oh, Billings, yeah, he'll make cash this week. Bonner, I like, I'd say B, just. And you have B. money in the bank. And you can, if you really want, you can you can get on Harry Mackay next week if you really want that sort of Hogan type. I would not be trading Newcomb. You, you right. started him for a reason. Yeah, that's a good call. And it was just, it was that. just... It was just an off day, and it's like you can just um, you just like back your boy in for one more week. The matchup this week uh, isn't the best. I just just forgot who they're playing. Who are they? who's Hawthorne playing this week? Jeez, uh, Hawthorne's Hawthorne. playing Melbourne. Yeah, so it's not not the best yeah. matchup, but MCG just give him another run. You're gonna that it's not worth boosting for the Hogan cash. I don't think just because, you know, it's hard. It's hard. I'd say option B out of these. And um, what do you, what uh, do you it, boys it's, think? It, it's very tough, isn't it? Spilsy, oh, you uh, got a particular option that you are keen on, mate, for Juki? Oh, it's very team based. It just depends what's going on beyond the scenes, I suppose. But I, I, think, I think I sort of have to agree with Janeth there. Just, yeah. I'll, don't like using boosts if you're not upgrading. That's sort of what I'm a bit hesitant on. A lot of it's correctional, but um, there's still a lot of uncertainty. I like the idea of banking some money. I think regardless of what I do, I'm, I plan on bring, bringing in Sarong this week myself and still banking 70K. So, you know, I'm going right down. So, yeah, I, I like option B. I think, yeah, Billings and Massimo, you just can't go wrong and then, yeah, assess the situation. Next what week, I like nice jump on. Pardon? Sorry, mate. Yeah. What I like about that as well is that you've got 70K in the bank as well, Dukey, to actually make some moves this week. What you'd, what you'd be spewing with is if you, you want to get a particular player in that maybe you don't have much data on so far, but really comes out next week, you're like, damn, I don't have any money there. And you're also saving a boost. Not that I'm saying you, you, you can't boost or you shouldn't boost. Um, if, you, if you were to boost, 
I, for, for me personally, I don't mind option C. I know that you're not going up, but you are getting Billings, Masmos in every one of your plans. And also, Barry, we talked about his quick uh, price rise. I, I don't mind C as well. But uh, yeah, very, very tough, yeah, mate. Just quickly, because I know a couple of questions might come up on this. Very short summations of Jack Billings and Riley Bonner. I think I think Bon is the one that is very dependent on Boyer Sinclair plays because a lot of Saints fans want Sinclair to go straight into the mids, and that's that's yeah. really good for Bonner. But what what do you see, Bonner? And then also Jack Billings, fifteen uncontested marks at the MCG. They had one hundred and forty uncontested marks as a team, and the AFL average is less than a hundred or around a hundred, I think. Is this sustainable? Yeah, it's not going to happen every week for Billings, but the score's there and the price is just dirt cheap. So that's yeah. oh, a tough one. They're both really good picks. Yeah, that like that stat line is not sustainable. Not a chance in the world. But it, you, you're right, Spills. He's got that price in the system. He played the role extremely well. I know that Track was pumping him up pre-season. That's why I was so surprised to actually see Billings start as the sub, but I think after that performance, you wouldn't be looking to sub him out. In saying that, there's data and evidence there that he's actually started as a sub. So I don't think that he's, you know, locked into this side all of a sudden. He could be a, a bad performance or, or two away from potentially being dropped or starting as a sub again. So I just, I like that short-term cash gen. We know that he's had a history of going at 80s, 90s before as well. He's, you know, a talented player. A bit of a forgotten man, and I, yeah, the same draft as Bonton taking him ahead of Bon. I think he's really suffered as well his reputation with, with that whole thing. But look, I, I don't mind Billings. I will likely look to bring him in myself this week. Um, and the other bloke, uh, who was the other bloke you mentioned? Sorry, oh, just mate, along with Billings, Bonner. I, I can't get a read on him, and that's why I didn't start him. I just mm. want to see him, as you mentioned, with Sinclair in the side. Abs is so set on the fact that Sinclair <laughs> is not going to affect him. Like, he is dead set. And, you know, I'm not I'm not doubting abs. I just want to get another week myself, mate. So we'll, uh, we'll get that yeah, I don't week. love and getting it's, him in. It's going to be early. perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, awesome. Sinclair should be back this week. Bonner won't rise in price this week. It's almost like the best of both worlds in a way. You just hold off on Bonner till next week. Yeah, really absolutely, want mate. Agree. All right. Back to this one here. So thanks for that, Duke. Appreciate it, mate. Hopefully that helps, buddy. Uh, the next one we've got here is from AFL Doodles. Now, we talked about a merch drop, and we've got uh, AFL Doodles to thank for a fantastic design that uh, will be on some of our T-shirts as well. So absolute legend. If you are not following this great man, make sure that you do because his work is second to none. It's unique, and it's just fantastic. So thank you for your, your support for the channel as well, buddy. Question is, Trade Buderick or back him in for another week to see if D'Ambrosio can perform again. Now, we know that, obviously, he's coming up to a buy. He will have a change in price this week. Spills, you were a little bit hot on Buderick there for a while in the preseason, mate. Have uh, you got any advice here, mate, on whether or not our man should trade Mr. Buderick? Oh, what did... Buderick score in the I can't remember what he scored in the practice match or the Amy series. Did oh, well Amy series round round one he didn't do much. Uh sorry, round zero he didn't do much. Scored, and that sort of put all of us off as a kid. That was last round week though, wasn't 90. it? Round one. No, no, no. So wait, round zero he scored ninety four. Round one he scored seventeen. Round one. And then in the Amy series he scored Spill well, scored sixty three. Yeah, so Six three, yeah. I think I think the Amy series was enough for me to go. Yeah, no way. I mean, the problem is like, he's just so dear for that spot. Mm. I mean, you're not going to have him at like D three. That's too thin. And then D four is is a little bit steep, considering we've had to pay up in other areas. So you'd probably rather go down a, a Massimo or a Williams. So I was never really keen on him up from that point. But there was a there was a time where Hardwick couldn't have pumped his tires up anymore, and you know, the role was there. But I think I had a look at it personally. I didn't like what I saw. I thought not that it's a terrible option, but there's just better better picks. So yeah, Doodles, I'd jump on Massimo for sure. I think we saw enough, and you're gonna bank 
80k. So yeah, you, you can't really go too wrong there. I think the, the, the scores in his system, and Borderick's got the buy as well. Yeah, you can always wait another week, but um, what's his break even? Because he's got a price rise coming up. You could always if he's going to go up 56. in price. You always fifty six. It's like. It's not. So not gonna, he's not going to. He's not going to make money. Yeah, jump yeah. out, jump off him. Yeah, I was, was going to say, if you had like a break even of like thirty or something, you could always wait for a price rise and then go down a massimo because you, you're ahead there. You get a bit more coin, but yeah, I don't think yeah, it's worth yeah. it. I don't think I you're think you're this I'd go. Sorry, yeah, mate. Go yeah, through. I was just going to say, I think this is one of those trades that you do just get out of the way. He doesn't look like he's a yeah. pick. He got sex and he got power back there. So I'm all for trading Connor Buddick as well, mate. Hope that helps, and buddy. All the best luck with your there's team, no man. Really, there's no real other sort of players around that price. That's not a Massimo, Sack Williams. Um, around that price in that 300K range, really awkward for defenders. To go down, it is, um, isn't it? to go up, go down like sideways. So just if you yeah. don't have Josh Gibbs to deal with uh, doodles, yet, yeah, straight down to to D'Ambrosio. Awesome, love it. Uh, here's another legend of the channel, Frio Tragic, my man Dan Mashman. Hope you're going well, mate. Hey fellas, thoughts on Tom Berry plus cash or Billings? Billings more likely to hang around and score constantly. Tom Berry has the super low break even, is cheaper. But the buy coming up and his scoring could be like a bit of a roller coaster. Hey, completely agree with you here, Dan. And guess what, mate? I'm asking myself the same question and I really don't have the answer at this point in time. Janeth, do you have the answer, mate? Or are you leaning one way or the other? Because I'm honestly just like Dan here. I, I can't make my mind up. I'm getting to the point where I'm like, well, do I just get both of them in? Do you have a feeling one way or, or the other here, mate? Do you go with Billings or take Barry in the cash I think Billings yeah I, I get that it's I get that the marks aren't sustainable but we would we were sort of talking before about the fact that Barry as a short-term play you sort of want him as a long-term play whereas I think with Billings you can treat him more as a short-term play because he can last through the round six and you can get off of him and that the beauty of Billings is that he won't go up in price as much this week as he will next week because he's got that 11 in his yes. price cycle this week, but he'll have the 119 this week and next week. So for those that aren't following, basically any players round one or round zero, depends if you played in round one. Um, so for those 10 teams that didn't play in round zero, that first price, that first score will only be in the price cycle for two rounds. Whereas any other round after that, that score will be in the price cycle for three rounds. And so similarly, in Billings' case, his 11 in round zero will only be in his price cycle for this week. And then his 119 will be in his price cycle this week and next week. And so that'll be really good for his cash generation. Um, and I think for that reason, I'd go Billings in this case, Dan. Beautiful, mate. Spills? Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I like Billings a lot more. I think better better for the long run. So, yeah, can't really go wrong there. I think got a good scoring system. Barry's got the buy. But, yeah, I like Billings just. But, yeah. Just. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not, it's really not clear cut, is it? It's, it's certainly mm. not clear cut. And if it was, Dan... Well, I, I had to pick one. I had to pick one. <laughs> All right, boys. <laughs> and and also, just, just one other thing to add there is if you go Billings... And, oh, but Billings is all, I just realised, Billings is also a forward. He doesn't have DPP either. That's, oh. Wait. Hey, maybe no, Duke doesn't. was talking about Sam Berry then. Because, oh, don't worry. All good. But, um, yeah, Billings doesn't have DPP. But if you want Ollie Dempsey next week, for instance, I'm not sure, Dan, if you started him, but it may be a bit hard to get Dempsey and Berry in back-to-back -back weeks, for instance. So that's just something else to consider as well. Yeah. Good point, mate. Good on you, Dan. Appreciate that, mate. Uh, talking about another legend of the community, my good mate, Kata. How are you, legends? Welcome back, gents. Good luck for 2024. And thank you very much as well, mate. I noticed you did put a couple of comments on about uh, about our potty as well. So we do really appreciate appreciate all the love, Kata. Thank you very much, legend. mate. Uh, Kata, looking at looping Wilson first game round two, 
If he goes 90 plus, I'm seriously considering Fisher to McKay for a quick cash grab spills. We will talk about this the yeah, other week. Where we, man. About this 100%. Move. 100%. KPP, red hot start thoughts. So I've already just alluded, Kata, that Spills and I were having this exact conversation. I was all over this, mate. Dead set. I was all over it after the buy. Then Jesse Hogan's come around, and I think it's a, it's a pretty similar type play here, isn't it? The difference between going your McKay over your Hogan is that you're going Hogan, and then obviously he's got the buy. McKay, you get him after the buy. And I believe that he's got some pretty good opposition. Is that right, Janet? For a week, mm, is it, mate? North, north on north. Friday. There you go. So north it's on like Friday. You know, Frio. Frio at um, Gathering without with Austin no McDonald, defenders. Without Brandon yeah. Cox. <laughs> with no defenders. Um, and, and Adelaide playing a bit with no time, defenders. Mate. Yeah. He, he's getting up the ground. He's playing. Jeez. It, it's just bewildering, isn't it? Just how much confidence can do to a player because he's striking the ball so purely. It's it's just like night and day from last year because last year the ball was going even in preseason the ball you don't even you don't know which way the ball's going, but like exactly. against Richmond every goal went over the umpire's head. It's like wow, and he's getting up yeah, the ground. He, uh, he's got the rough his last, time. His last set shot in. Uh... Round zero mode actually also went over the bloody goal umpire's head, and I was spewing about <laughs> that one, mate. That is etched into my brain, mate. So, oh, can we no, stop no, bringing, sorry, bringing bloody Carlton up, please? Oh. But look, I, I'll, I'll, I I'll tell actually... you what, Bigger, one other thing, one yeah. other thing. Um, one, two, six of the next seven games to Carlton is in Melbourne, Marvel or the MCG, and then you got the uh, you got the Adelaide Oval gather round game against Fremantle. Look. I, I don't mind it, Kata. I really don't mind it, mate. So you're getting your, your Wilson for 90 plus. Yeah, Fisher McKay, I, I, I don't mind it at all. So Spills and I were actually looking at this play just sneakily. We didn't sort of talk about any videos with anyone else. But uh, yeah, maybe a sneaky option there, Kata. Absolutely love it, mate. Thanks for that, buddy. Love it. Uh, next one is Jackie Jones. How does one delete their team? <laughs> I oh, look, Jack, obviously you've had a bit of a tough start to the season, mate. But we've all we all struggled at the start of last year, particularly Janet and myself, and look at what we managed to achieve. Now it wasn't a top hundred rank or anything, but we got back to the top one percent from you know a 90 odd K rank. So mate, do not delete your side. It's only one week. Who knows next week? You could get yeah, your exactly. sarong that gets tagged and goes to 75. You could have your liver that does liver things like we expect him to and gives you your 150. These things can even out very, very quickly, mate. So uh, don't delete the, your side, the, mate. Uh, quick one. Glass Just apple. for Jack, would you would you be aggressive? Like, uh, with that question, I'm assuming that Jack's got off to a poor start, as we, as we normally do. In this situation Absolutely. last year, I know that we were both a little bit more aggressive than we would be, say, if we were ranked at 20K. How aggressive would you be? Would you use a boost to... Um, make correctional rookie upgrades? Would you use a boost to restructure? Like, without any context, what would you do in Jack's situation? Yeah, well, without any context, without doubt, I would use a boost. Without doubt. That's what they're here for, you know? I remember I had one in the bank. So if, if, you, if you haven't had the best start, you've got to be aggressive because you just can't wait. And that's why lots of people are considering flipping a Fisher flipping a Nick Martin earlier than what we usually would because they're the type of picks that we need to get out of potentially to to catch up with some of these teams that have had a red hot start. So yeah, I would be absolutely going as aggressive as you could. You look, you're talking about deleting your side, mate. There's nothing wrong with going hard on your boosts. What's what's the worst that you can lose? You know what I mean? So yeah, I would be going ultra aggressive myself. Janet, do you share a difference of opinion there, mate? Would you go the opposite and try to save trades and then go hard a little bit later? Or are you sort of with me here by going aggressive? I think so. I think so. And it's there's a there's a very fine line between being aggressive and points chasing. You can't get last week's points. But what you can do is you can set your cell, your team up to be able to be in a position where you can try to get as sustainable as score possible based off of last week's points. So, Sarong's 170. He's not going to score 170 a week, but he's mm. he looks mighty good. What do you reckon, Spills? 
No, I rate it. Yeah, you can't you can't yeah. go wrong with Sarong. He's a bloody freak. I'm trying to trying to get him in, honestly, but I like the idea of the previous one, like planning, like maybe maybe get going a Nick Martin down or like using a bit of DPP yeah. down or billions, bring in bring in D'Ambrosio, banking like two hundred K or something like that. And then that play with Fisher, if you can loophole Wilson, like do that. But if Wilson doesn't score that well, use a boost and then grab Sarong in your team. Like for Fisher. You got enough money to get Fisher up to Sarong. I like that play. But it's just all up in the air because there's just so many bloody possibilities. Like who knows who's gonna respond, who's gonna who's a failed pick. Like there's there's about five or six players who I'm ready to get rid of this week. But who exactly? I'm not sure. So yeah, it's a tough one. Chin up, Alrighty. Jackie. Big long, long season ahead. Absolutely, yeah. mate. Head up, Jackie boy. You will absolutely smash it this week, I'm sure, mate. All right, on to Maximus Maxi Chisholm. G'day, Max. Hey guys, what are your thoughts on trading out Nick Martin? Not super worried about his scoring or role. I think both be decent, but I think there's at least eight other defenders who will most likely outscore him. Uh, worth having another look or moving on to two call route. We have spent a lot of time on this podcast on Nick Martin so far, but very quickly, Janeth, uh, Nick Martin, what, what, what are you looking to do, mate? Hold or, or move on? He's got Maxi's, Maxi's spot on. He's got the exact reason why I would move him on. And at the start of the season, mm. we were thinking, okay, in this role, he's going to be a top six defender easily. But there are so many good defender options this year. And if Luke Ryan is if Luke Ryan isn't the round one merchant that we think he is, <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be in the list as well. So it's 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 important not to get sucked in here because year on year we have so many defenders that start the season off well. Remember Dane Rampy last year, I think he scored like 150 or something. Oh, yeah, because the game yeah. is the game's less contested. Players don't <laughs> run out of games well enough. There's less tackles. It's too warm. Intercept marks galore. We had, we had 18, oh, sorry. We had 20. Um, yes, we had 20 defenders score 105 or are average in 105 right now. That's not going to yeah. happen at the end of the season. But Nick Martin in that role, <laughs> if he keeps kicking it to the other team, he'll, he'll struggle to break 80. And so I think I think that's a re that's a good reason that even if he gets DPP, he may just be a D seven M nine sort of swing at the end of the season, and that's not really want what you want to be starting your team off with, really, is it? Absolutely, Spills. Spills? No, I agree. I'm I'm yeah, I'm pretty keen to jump off Nick Martin because there's so much value just everywhere else, and look, he's rounded off to five hundred k as well. I mean, how much are you going to make off him? Like, it's all right if the role is good because you plan on having him as a keeper. But at that price, he's, you, yeah, you're looking for a keeper. He's not a keeper. I I just think he's one of those picks that you just need to jump off and you need that money to fix other problems in your side. Personally, getting a, like getting a Gibkiss up to a D'Ambrosio, you need to find that money somewhere um, whether it's targeting a Sarong, like I said before. So... Yeah, there's a lot of other possibilities, but I think it's more risky only Nick Martin than it is right. losing him. Well, there's our advice for you, mate. Nothing wrong with yeah. moving on Nick in our opinion, but it's it's still tough to do. Our next one is from my man, Scobie Bryant, the good-looking <laughs> rooster himself. Yeah. On a scale of one, I'm guessing one to ten, how much do you love my cuddles directed at DR? Mate, I just called you one of the best-looking roosters around, so you know that I absolutely love your cuddles, mate. <laughs> and how big are Spills' pipes? Now, we, we, we've seen this. We've seen multiple multiple photos before, and uh, it only took him two days, <laughs> mate, once the pipes actually got out onto the dating scene for Spills to get uh, locked up here. So uh, I can tell you, mate, <laughs> being in the myself, Spills just gets up in the morning. Spills often stays here over a week, and he's just like Tarzan, mate. Gets out of bed, you know, beats the chest a little bit there before some baked beans and a nice coffee. Uh, the, the guns <laughs> are looking phenomenal at the moment, mate. They are looking phenomenal, and Spills is loving the hot weather. Any excuse for him to get the rig out is is a good one for Spills. So, uh, yeah, very, very big. Spills, anything you want to add on that one, mate? I just immediately thought of that 
video that we did where you had a tenner on me kicking a goal from like 50. And oh, I, was, I wasn't that confident, but I was like, we'll see how we go. You it's nailed that. Then, you flashed it. First kick yeah, of the day, yeah, yeah. I mean, just step down to the car, rig up, and then bang, <laughs> off, off he goes, man. Uh, I could not believe it, mate. Yeah, look, I put a bit of mayonnaise on that for sure. You know, I could have kicked it with a shirt on, but, you know, it is what it is. It was hot, so <laughs> whatever. Doesn't matter, mate. <laughs> I love it, love it. And, uh, Scopes, also a good Bendigo boy as well. So shout out to anyone that is uh, listening or viewing from Benders. No, I appreciate uh, it. is H. Now, I'll tell you what. I've talked uh, to H for I don't know how many hours it's been, particularly in the last week. Uh, best man you'll meet. Love H. Absolute legend. So hope that you're well, buddy. Uh, I'm guessing I'll probably speak to you later on tonight, the way we've been going, man. Forgot to – oh, hang on. Forgot to add. Hang on. I'll quickly go just down to your bottom one here, mate. G'day, lads. Is Zach Fisher up for trade after just one game? Have you boys seen enough time to go? H, I will speak to you personally on this one, mate, but I'm going to give you a really short answer. Yes, I've seen enough. See you later, son. Janeth, yeah. seen enough from the fish? Yeah. Oh, he's just like a, he's just the epitome of a preseason trap. He's going, he's gone. I've had enough. You can give him a week. You can, if you don't have other issues. But if you need, no. if you want to spread the cash around, you can, you can go for it as well. There's no, no right answer here. All right, H, that was pretty short and simple, mate. We didn't need to talk too much about that one. We are all off the Fisher pick at the moment, buddy. Uh, and forgot to add, is wines an issue? So this is going to be an interesting one, boys. I think we quickly need to dissect this one. Uh, now, we are we are getting on with time as well. So we do need to wrap things up pretty shortly. But feel like we are going to be scrapping sub hundreds. Now, what was interesting with this pick for me, and I tweeted this at the time during the game, Kenny put this bloke on the ground. His tog was terrible. Every time I was looking up fan footy, he had a little bloody bench symbol there. The CBAs, I think it was 48%, 45 yeah. to 48, just for memory. I was hoping that that would be 60 plus, personally. And that's what I was expecting with the pick. Now, I don't think that the Oli Wines pick is, is a train wreck by any stretch of the imagination. Now, what were our expectations with Oli? I would have really, really liked a 104 to 106. That's what I, I would have really liked. I thought best case scenario, he may even push that 110, but I wasn't expecting the word from Oli Wines. What I want from Oli Wines is uh, hopefully just, just getting to triple figures, getting to triple figures. He's got a good buy and he's just going to be a nice placeholder. And so I'm ready to upgrade to an Uber Premium. Now, uh, Janet, do you have Ollie Wines? Your wines owner? Yeah, he's, he's my Airbnb, mate. He's, he's the, the Airbnb. Tell us about this Airbnb <laughs> business you got going with Ollie, mate. Oh, but we just, we, we named him the Airbnb on the, in the team reveal. Everyone went through the CBAs. It felt like for Port Adelaide against West Coast, it was it was sort of it wasn't exactly a training drill because West Coast put up a good fight. But I mean, if you were expecting one twenties from Ollie Wines, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what the game against West Coast was more suited to the outside run because by halfway through the game, the game's over, less clearances, that sort of thing, and so you can beat yourself up. That, okay, I didn't go for Matt Crouch. That game against West against Gold Coast, that was exactly a Matt Crouch game. He was raining, clearances and stoppages galore. It was like polar opposites in terms of that. This week, though, against Richmond, there were so many stoppages in the game against Carlton that Richmond played. They Their clearances, I think they won the clearances in the end. They'll be up for it, stoppage-wise, and I think this is the week. I wouldn't be surprised if Ollie Wines went 110 this week. That's... As a as a biased owner, and just as a footy watcher, I'll say that a sneaky suspicion Ollie Wines goes one ten plus this week. I love it, mate. I hope that you're right too. Spills, your wines owner as well, buddy. Yeah, and look, it's not ideal, but he still outscored Liver. So look, in terms of priorities of players that need to leave my side, I think I'd have Ollie Wines at about seven or eight. So I think there's just bigger fish to fry. Quite literally. Um, I like. Oh, did you, that, that? did you mean that? You mean that? It's bigger fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just off the cuff. The there, boys. Oh, oh, that that is impressive, Spills. Bigger fish to fry. Uh, very He's good. Unhinged. Right. 
I, I, I unhinges. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now, <laughs> I want to see your hand up to the camera. I reckon you've written that down like the old Dwayne O from Dwayne. I just waiting for the right there's moment there. There's nothing. No, 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 no. Okay, mate, I'll give that to you. I'll give that to I'm you. I'm over that, tired, boys, so I'm in good form. <laughs> Great form, mate. Much better form than the fish anyway, mate. Uh, thanks, H. Appreciate that, buddy. Here is now... Maybe we need to give Spills a nickname here. Look, I can't do it. I'm still going to go with Cause Other Ladies Man Blackwich, but ladies. we may have uh, Ladies Man Spills here after he got the pipes out. But uh, Cause, tips on how to back my gut when picking my starting team. Mm. I had Merritt, mm. Butters, Laird, and Strong in my team most preseason and never went through with it with a bond. Oh, Cause, uh, mate, we've chatted that much during the preseason. Now, Cause very quickly, mate, I want to take you back to a conversation I reckon that we had late last year. This would have been at about 1.30 in the morning. There are a few of us boys on the video chat there. And we talked about, and this is, I don't mean to be mean here, this is a medical condition. We've got something called elephantitis causa. So for anyone that doesn't know what elephantitis is, it's, it's, it's I shouldn't laugh, but basically... We're talking a huge nutsack here, boys. We're talking big kahunas here. I don't know if you boys, when you were younger, there was like these like blow up little animal things with horns on it and you'd sit on there, you'd hold the horns and you'd sort of bounce around. You, you don't look like you did this. Maybe I just had a bit of a weird childhood here. I'm not too sure. But Causa, your kahunas, mate, are huge. We need to just chuck a bit of a pin in there, mate, and, and get them to uh, become less swollen. I think I think what you need to do, mate, is not worry about the real pod type picks and just go a little bit vanilla and back your gut. Like you had some great preseason picks, mate. And I think what can happen to lots of us, Causa, and this just isn't you, mate. I think all of us in some way panicked a little bit um, towards the start of the first lockout. And that is that, you know, uh, uh, rather than going with your gut, you've gone with a few last minute decisions, maybe some news that you heard, and maybe some people have gotten in your ear. That the trouble is when you take in so much content, you get such varying opinions, don't you? And I think it's great to take in a lot of content, but I think maybe what's happened to you, Causa, is that the, the mind was just a little bit frazzled for you, mate. With so many picks going through your head, you've just gone with a couple of blokes that you weren't starting, that you weren't planning on starting with here, mate. So my advice, Causa, is back in your gut, mate, because those picks were fantastic picks. Don't listen to the crowd noise. If someone says you're a terrible pick causer, don't go with him and you like him, stick with him, mate. That would be my best advice. Um, Janeth, spills anything that you can give to the great man about how he can just try to go with his gut? He summed up pretty well, I reckon. Just stick to your gut like I should have with my preseason team, but I didn't. I got baited by See, Zach Fisher. We're on so. the same posse, aren't we? Yeah. Here, it, it happens, maybe to, maybe you've got it a happens few more, to the but. best of us. Yeah. Absolutely. Happens to everyone. Honestly, Causa, like, obviously watch the, the sword play potty. But if you if you genuinely didn't listen to any podcast for three weeks and you followed your because I know you watch a lot of footy, mate. If you if you just base all your decisions off of what you watch, watch you your ranking will skyrocket, mate. Honestly. That's that's mm. my that's my advice to add to DR's. I reckon that's the best advice. But watch the I'll sword play potty. When he, when uh, he, absolutely, when he... mate. Call that. Call that. <laughs> absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Don't, don't go to the sword play potty, mate. Oh but, uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's fantastic advice. Cause that, don't, I, I, don't underrate your own ability in this game, yeah. mate. You're a really, really good super coach, mate. And I think that's fantastic advice from Janeth. You, you know the game. You, you know your football, mate. Just stick to your gut, buddy. But uh, you will bounce back, my friend. I know it, Causa. Good on you, legend. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, we are getting, I think this is, yep. So we're at the end here. So we've got five ones. We'll get through these ones quick. The Bishop, g'day, Bish. G'day, guys. Love to know what you think of doing Young up to Ryan. I own Dacos, Shees, and Houston. Jeez, isn't that a nice combo? Dacos, Shees, and Houston. I think my man, Janeth, might have the same thing. Also, do you mind the Fisher up to Hogan trade? So uh, very quickly, Young up to Ryan. I don't think we're huge advocates for Luke Ryan. Uh, Spills, would you be doing that at this stage, mate? Young to Luke Ryan. I personally think you could just wait the week if that's what you're into. Get that extra week starter. See if that Young actually plays back or actually plays mid this week. Uh, Spills, yeah. what would you be doing there, mate? Would, would you be an advocate for Young to Ryan this week? 
Oh, you got to hold young, surely. He's seen so many sides. And, yeah, it was just a bit unlucky. It's a bit of Sunday night carnage, to be honest. Yeah. And I think, they, I think, unfortunately for young, he become accountable, which isn't always great for Supercoach. So I think it's just one where you just got to hold it, reassess the situation. Look, he's had this role all pre-season. Surely he's going to get it back this week. They'll, they'll adjust the magnets. So they're playing good footy for Rio. So... Yeah, I, I think they'll review the match and um, I don't think Young will be playing too much off halfback. He's just so dangerous in, in the midfield and they look they look like such a team when he's in there. So I one, would wait on that one. Yeah, personally. one thing I'll, I'll add as well, it's a really good idea to take or well, to pay close attention to those team sheets. So, for example, if I see them bring in a forward, I'm a little bit worried if they don't actually yeah. bring in a solid defender. Because I would assume that Young would probably be the most logical solution to go down yeah. back. So I would definitely be keeping a look at the team sheets there, mate. Uh, Janet, what, what are your thoughts yeah, very quickly, I'm mate, on the uh, to Young to Ryan trade? If you're trading Young, I wouldn't go to Ryan. Because, okay, here's here's the, the logic behind that. You're trading Young with the logic that he'll go into, the, into defence. Ryan will have to go up and play more countable. And so you're losing Ryan's rebound in points, which are going to go to Hayden Young, because that's the that's the point of picking Luke Ryan is he doesn't have he has one less uh, outlet to out of defence to contend with being Hayden Young. So if you're trading Young because he's not going to be in the midfield, he's going to be in defence. You're actually losing the lure of picking Luke Ryan at the same time. So if you're going to trade Hayden Young, I would be trading to anyone but Luke Ryan, if that logic yeah. makes sense. Uh, it does to me, mate. And also, Hayden Young had 11, what is it, clangers, a 50-meter 50, 50 penalty to begin with. He was doomed from the start, which he was, he was, he wasn't getting to the ton the way he, he was, he was Nick Martin light, except he wasn't butchering it. He was just, he was just free kicks against, a bit like Brody Grundy, like, if we had oh, a, a clanger count, contest. seven free kicks against, what is going on? Oh, gee. And I tell you, it's so awkward. I, I actually tweeted this out. Uh, when I saw Young do that, so it was actually within a 10-second period, gave a, a free kick away for a high tackle, just a brain fade, just walks through the mark, and I'm thinking, well, this is Orko goal. <laughs> I own Hayden Young. How do I actually feel about this? I'm not too sure. <laughs> You just think, I wish it was any other bloke apart from Young. Why would have to be Hayden Young? Why couldn't it be Buddy Swikowski that did it? But, uh, that, that, that's the game that we play, boys. But uh, the other quick uh, question here, the second part to this question, Fisher to Hogan. Now, if you're if it's not going to affect your buys too much, mate, and you haven't got too many other problems, I, I like it. I like it. I reckon if you're going to go for a bit of a risky play, and, and when you talk about risk, you know that you're going to get a big price rise. You're expecting a decent score as well. Just remember you got the buy. But personally, I would I would say yes to that. Uh, Janet, would are you a fan of that, or are you not really with me on the Hogan train here, mate? If possible, I really like Cadder's tactic. Put the E on Wilson, see how it goes. If it goes well, Fisher to Mackay. Because Mackay and Hogan save and serve the same purpose, right? They're, yep. they're cash makers yep. in the short term. So you can almost lock, you can save yourself a trade next week for the same purpose. Because you're not going to have Hogan next week anyway. So what, you're going to trade Hogan out next week? So it's like, what's the point of that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good advice. So yeah, just, that's my advice there. Beautiful. Spilsy, uh, on the Hogan train or not, mate? Too risky for you. I really like him. Doc, he has been in my trade plans. I've had him in and out, but that buyer voice, it just, oh, it just no. hurts you so much. That with Catters and Sexton, it's just, it's impossible. It's not logical. I think I'm going to do the exact same thing almost. I think, yeah, Catter just raised the best point ever. Why don't you do it with Harry Mackay? A bit of a loophole. He's cheaper as well and still got a piss easy run. So you miss <laughs> that buyer. So I don't mind it. Yeah, I, I like Hogan, but. Oh, uh, not now. Just terrible timing. So yeah. you're going to get yeah. a donut. Bloody buy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you started him, geez, it was ballsy, but congratulations. Mm. A risky kick has really paid off. So well, well done for all the starters there. All right. Thanks, mate. Next one's Q Long. Biggest must-haves in your team. So biggest must-haves in your team. I'm guessing that's players that we own. 
place to get in ASAP if we don't currently own. Mate, I'll go through this obviously in great detail in the stock market video. But for me, I think I've already touched on Isaac Heaney. I think I'm not going to call him a must-have but by any stretch, but he would be a very high priority for me. We've talked about your berry that's on the bubble. We've talked about your house that's on a bubble. If you are looking for that rookie type selection, uh, look, Tom Green, I think is going to be a must have at some stage of the season. It just depends. Do you want to jump on now before he gets completely out of reach and then cop the buy? Or are you going to wait till after the buy and just have to pay up a little bit more? I'm not too sure, but I would have him close to a must have selection this year. And I think the other obvious one for me is Nick Dacos. You know, we were a little bit worried about what's going to happen with Finn, if Finn plays. Uh, even this week with, with Zach Merritt. He was a buddy sub, wasn't he? Finn McGuinness. So uh, mm. didn't didn't go anywhere near, near Merritt to start off the game. So they're mm. probably the must-haves that I'm currently owning that I would recommend for others to get in. Uh, Janeth, would you recommend Houston as almost a must-have defender with that awesome run with the fact that maybe question marks over Martin going back there, question marks over your Hayden Young now. Would you go as far as saying that, that Houston's in that category, mate? Yeah, 18 touches, 114 points. It's like the it's like the anti-Martin. Sickening. Sickening. Because every, every Houston possession goes to a Port Adelaide play. It's just, it's it's a breath of fresh air. He, he's, he's pretty close to must-have, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else from your side, mate, that you can sort of put close to that category? Or would you would you put Max Gorn in there Gorn? if you didn't start a Max Heaney? Gorn? Heaney. Heaney, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sheasel looked looked really good. Yep, very good. Yep. Um yep. underpriced. Um McKercher, Reed. I feel like everyone has oh, sorry. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the mini drive line there. Everyone's got everyone. Decent coach, Jasmine Kircher. Bugger off. Well, George doesn't have him, PR, so you're all good. The two, the no, two goats, the two biggest, the two biggest YouTuber, biggest YouTubers. YouTubers for Super Coach. Most Ho subscribed, Aiden uh, Kircher. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Gorn, Gorn looked awesome. He was always going to bounce back. Always. He's, he's yeah. a superstar. Yeah. That, I'm glad I I'm, I'm glad I pulled back from that because I was always going to fade him, but I ended up putting Jacko at um, F1 and starting both the Gorny Jacko. combo. So, yeah, yeah, good really, move, mate. So lucky because it, yeah. it was going to be Houston or Gorn. So you know Houston's still really good, but Maxi Gorn, bloody hell, terrible antipod to have. I would have been crying myself oh, to sleep yeah. on a Sunday night. I tell you. Spills, I know our teams are pretty close, mate. Is there anyone else that you can add that we haven't sort of touched on that you own? Um, that you think may be close or must have, mate, that we haven't mentioned. I don't know if there's anyone else really on the list. Must have. I'd have to have a quick look at it. I, I, I'd say Tom Green if you can have his buy. Um, yeah, yep. same here, mate. Oh, it's a tricky one. Max Gorn, 100% easily. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've, pretty, we've pretty much covered it, mate, because I know what Matthew you're talking about. Right. This week, I think it's a must have if you don't have him personally. Um, All right. We will move on then to the Watermelon Cruiser. Aside, I love that name as well. Aside from rookie injuries and some plays with good roles, but poor disposal efficiency, no major concerns with the side. Awesome, mate. Looks like you had a pretty good start. Would you consider moving on one of Martin Wines, Fisher Young, to Billings and Gibkiss to Massimo? 250 key for GWS and Gold Coast plays in two weeks or wait and watch. It's tough, mate, because you, it obviously seems like you're onto a pretty decent start here. But in saying that, the thought of going Martin out, Gipkis out, and bringing in, just say, a, a, a Billings and Massimo in 250K, I actually like that move myself. Do you think that's costing too many points there, Janet? Or do you like the move as well, mate? Um, I don't mind it. But you got to be really sold that Martin Wines Young aren't going to be at least short-term good picks. I think Fish is the one that I would move out of those four most. It's the one that the role is least likely to go away. And if Fish's role goes away, he's he's not going to score well. Yeah. So you're saying Fisher to Billings and Gipkiss to Massimo. And I must say... 
that's been one of my more realistic trade plans myself this week. Uh, Spilsy, what are your thoughts, mate? No, I totally agree. Yeah, Aaron Jav said they summed up really well. I think mean, it gives us to Massimo definitely. It's a must trade. But yeah, you got to back in those those awkward 400k players. I think Fish is the one that's got to go for me. I think you could justify a case for holding Martin. Um, he's got a week to prove himself, I think. But I'm not mucking around with that position. There's too much money elsewhere. So before price changes, I think we need to be just super on it. We don't have much time because two weeks from now, everyone's going to get a price rise. And yeah, before you know it, the ships are sailing. So, yeah, we can't muck around with Nick Martin, I don't reckon, personally. Beautiful, mate. And I reckon AFL Doodles might be able to come up with something. If we trade out Fisher, I could see a nice little doodle coming from that there as well. Uh, all right, two more to go, boys. Uh, Banana Man, one, two, three, four. Hey, buddy. Worth using a boost for a rookie correction. Uh, no. Janet, we're not huge on using oh. the boost for rookies necessarily without no. going up. Look, I'd, especially I'd, after one week, you've got you've got to give no. him that. Oh, I yeah, guess like a if Zach Reid. Yeah, he's referring. I think he's referring to like a Zach Reid or something. Like a Zach Reid yeah. or a Marty Hall would be logical. But I think mm. you probably got to wait a week for the questions, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Four to six time. weeks for Reid. You just got to have him rot on your bench yeah. until he comes back. Good job, yeah. security. So I wouldn't. And we, we don't I need, we don't need year, plain it. defenders, do we, Spills? Because of best eighteen, we don't necessarily need. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, you get, you get starts on the bench and then the coffee with right these sticks. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah awesome. no. Don't do that. All right, mate. Um, but look, it, using a boost, I don't, I don't mind you using a boost. Maybe try to try to look for an upgrade within that boost, though, mate. But hey, I'm I'm considering all options myself. And last one is from Chili Day. Get a Chili. Hey, guys. Would you describe bringing in Sarong as getting ahead of the curve or a knee jerk reaction? Now, I'll just jump on very quickly with this one. I'm going to give you my personal circumstance here, mate, because I'm looking at jumping on Strong this week along with 25 other players. So I, I can't bring him all in, but he's certainly one bloke I'm keen on. The reason for that, mate, is because he was a big part of my preseason team. I reckon 65% of the preseason, this bloke was in my side. So from a personal point of view, the way that I view it, if I'm looking to trade him in this week, I'm not looking to simply trade him in because he had a massive score. I'm looking to trade him in because I thought, well, Yes, my, my preseason research was correct. He looks fantastic. I, I think that I should bring him in. So if you if Caleb Sarong was nowhere on your radar, then I think it may be a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. But I think if you're someone that's constantly been on your watch list and you've been a fan of the selection for a little while, then I don't think it's, it's knee-jerk reaction whatsoever, mate. Uh, you won't get the points, but obviously he'll be out of reach for a little while. You'd assume with that 170 in his system. Again, keeping in mind, it's only his round one score. So that's going to be the first score that's out, and then he will start to come back down to the pack again. So, uh, Janeth, any anything you'd like to add to that one, mate? It's funny because I've, I've also... In the trades that I did before we went um, to record, he's he's one of them that's coming in, oh, oh. and I think it's it's hard because it means that Martin and Fisher are both gone. So it's it's just mm. Fisher, Martin. I don't know. I just I just can't. I think that Martin may end up in that D ten to twelve range if he does get the DPP. Just after seeing the game, it's just oh, this. It just screams inconsistency, but yeah. you never know. And with, with Sarong, I think we're both going to mention that it's more, we're not chasing the points, but we're chasing, we're changing the structure. Is we're going four big boys in the midfield. And so it's one more, one less top eight midfield that you want to get in later throughout the years. That's what we're going for, right? Spills, I think you're in the same boat. I think so. I, it's, I'm weighing it up because if I grab a Caleb Sarong, it means I'm going to have to fade Jack Billings for Dempsey because I like I could I could have 605k if I with Billings so I could get I could probably put Dacos in the middle and then grab a Dan Houston but I'd miss out on Sarong but I'd still get Billings so I'm probably looking at going Dempsey over Billings just so I can get Sarong it's a really tricky situation because both. Because it, it all revolves around getting Massimo in. He's he's number one. So Gibkus to Massimo is a given. 
So yeah, probably looking at that's like revealing revealing my trades now. I may as well just do that. But I'm probably looking at doing that to be honest. And and yeah, maybe even if I could even use that sort of cutter strut and you know see how Wilson goes on the Friday night. Don't mind, mate. Yeah. Make my trade, and then yeah, maybe just go Harry McKay, bank three hundred k, and then whoever I want next week, when, and then do a link, do a rack upgrade almost. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Grundy. I'm still a while away, so I probably get any sort of gummy feeler I want. But boys, is Saron going up this week or next week? Just to clarify, next week, mate. Next, next. Yeah, so yeah, I, I I could go. Yeah, I could go Harry McKay in this week, bank like three hundred k. And then go down again, and then try to target. Yeah, the but it's that North before. matchup, mate. Like he's got North this week, Sarong. So See, like it's almost it's so hard. So would you recommend Dempsey? Well. Would you? So fate. Oh, so I'm, not, yeah. not, 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 yeah. Join the bandwagon. Get on. Can't believe you started so, this fight on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not right. getting billing, so. I don't Look, know, I, man. I don't know if billings is the real deal. Look, I wouldn't say Billings is a must trade in men. Like, look, in yeah, saying yeah. that, I'm I'm really keen on bringing him in, right? So, I'm, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll just say that. But if you miss out on Jack Billings, I don't think it's going to be like Chandler levels from last year, for example. I know different price yeah. points, but that really killed me. It, just say a Chandler. Mm -hmm. um, I'm finding it hard to read the fact that he was sat off a sub. Um, the stat line just is not going to be realistic, particularly if you look at his marks. So I, I don't think it's the, the worst thing in the world, mate, if you miss out on Billings. I don't think he's a move mountains type player to bring in personally, although I am very keen on him myself. Yeah, no, probably looking at like Billings and Houston versus Sarong and Dempsey because, yeah, Whoa. give give us to Massimo is an inevitable. So that's what I'm playing with at the moment. Shit, that's tough. So, yeah, That's so but it's all it's probably all yeah, it could all be Fisher dependent as well, or depending on what um yeah Wilson does, could have that little loophole and then just bank a heap of cash and then yeah, I know missing up missing out on that north matchup, which is a tough one, but oh it's oh no, I think I think that's the obvious thing. I think Dempsey well, I could I could possibly go I could possibly go bury you as well, because it is best eighteen, remember. So it's not gonna hurt too much, but Oh, I don't know. I think Dempsey, he's um, he's got a better buy, and he's got, he's definitely best twenty two. He looks really good, but he's just a he's a genuine forward. So I think he's got a quiet game. Due, I don't know if you can back it up. That's he four. That's up the like ground though. Bills. That's one. That's one thing that I, that I. Yeah, he does. From his that, VFL that, days, he's. It's just they just have the a VFL numbers are insane. So insane. I think. Yeah. Well, that's their trade, I think. Then, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be Nick Martin, um, all the way with their DPP, all the way down to Dempsey. I bank like a fair bit of coin there, and then the next one would be Fisher, up to um, Sarong, and then yeah, Gibkiss to Massimo. So um, I think that's the the obvious one for me. I don't want to muck around with with Fisher and. And Martin, I know it's very reactionary, but I just yeah the the roles we've we've we spoke about it, but they just both yeah. look so terrible, and there's yeah. way too much value, boys. Like you can't, you don't get so wrong in for this week. I mean, you're going to miss that North score. I, I I genuinely reckon there's another 150, and then see you later. He's going to 700k. You're not getting him in. So and he's got the yeah. best buy ever. So yeah, he could almost be a top three midfielder, Caleb Sarong. He was insane. Yeah. No. Janice, uh, have you locked in any trade plans at the moment, mate, who is still a little bit all over the shop? It's just really hard. It's really hard because I'm like, Gib Kirsten D'Ambrosio is locked in. Yep. And then yep. it's just mm -hmm. those other two. As in what happens with Fisher, Martin, Lazaro. I think it's those three, yeah. Those three on the chopping block. And it's either they all get another chance <laughs> in the team or two of them are gone. It's a bit like... It's like Survivor at the, <laughs> yeah, at that, the moment. Yeah. They're, they're, they've all come into the little tribal area and they're, one of them's going to get their last candle. And... 
<laughs> whatever the hell, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, well, love it, mate. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very much with you. Very much with you. Um, I'm actually going to put it out a separate video, most likely Thursday night, just going through some different trade scenarios as well. I went through a heap on my round review, so I, I honestly don't know at this stage, but uh, Zach Fisher is basically 100% gone for me, along with Josh Gipkis. The main decision I've got is do I boost and get Martin out, get out of Dodgeville now, or do I give him the extra week? That's the big decision I've got on my hands, and I'm really on the fence at the moment. So not too sure when it comes to my trades, but I will definitely let everyone know during the week. Now, boys, pretty much time to finish up, but before we do, let's talk some quick captain options. So, uh, look, I'll, I'll start off. Tom Green, I'll tell you what, every sort of combination that I can get Green in, particularly mm -hmm. when he's playing this sort of opposition, I will do. So the first game of the week is Saints-Pies. I think Dacos is a really easy one there. Nice and early on. You can just bank that at the start of the week if that's what you want. We've got the Crows and the Cats. I've really got no one there. Uh, the Ruse and Fremantle. Well, hello, Caleb Sarong. Another nice early VC. You could even go your day cost into your sarong. You've then got Melbourne coming up. Now, we've seen what Max Gorn has done to Melbourne in the past. I don't know if it, was, it wasn't last year, but previous years to that, we've seen some huge scores. Maybe keep a bit of an eye on him. Uh, you've got your merit types here against Sydney. I don't have him. Bonson and Pally and Green. So for me, it's out of day cost. Or if I get Sarong in, probably out of one of those two for the VC. Or else I could even VC, looking at the time here, I could VC Bont with the Livingston loop and actually go into Tom Green. So most likely for me, Bont, I'll go Bont into Green or else possibly Sarong into Green for myself. Spills, what are you thinking captaincy-wise, mate? Well, if I go through my trade plans... What I just revealed before, um, I think ninety percent on him now. I'm, obviously, I'm pretty happy with Dempsey, so I'm probably looking at VC and Sarong against North for Green against West Coast. I mean, how can you go wrong? Surely one of them's going to fire. Like I'm, I probably, I, I think my captaincy threshold sort of increases a bit. So like, I really want one of them to go sort of over one twenty. Like it's going to be an awkward one to pass up because look what happened with Dacos and Green last week. Um, but if you if you don't own either of those two, because I know a lot of people don't own Strong, some don't own Green, Janeth, but there is um, there is one I dream of, Je I dream of Heaney, who God, plays the Dons. So if you want to VC right. Heaney against Essen, and I think you can, um, that's a brave one. But we do leak a lot of points. I think, and he can he's a sort of bloke that can carve us up. And Sydney always, I don't know why, but. They just have the wood on us every year. Like they, they always fire. Their mid score well, their forwards score well. So if you want to do that, you can. Dacos is obvious, but um, look, I think Dacos, he had, what was it, 30, 30, 37 disposals, I reckon, against Sydney on Friday, which is a fair, that's a lot of, that's a lot of touches. Good game as well. Yeah, that's, good, yeah, good game, he's, he's going to be an unreal player yeah. for his career, but like, for the for the amount of touches he got, he scored a one thirty. Like it's fair and reasonable, but I reckon I'm probably looking at yeah Sarong to just absolutely carve up against North. I mean Green did it. What's to say? Yeah, yeah. You, you can't. I just don't think you can go wrong with it. So yeah, that's, that's the obvious. Beautiful touches. Put forty six on Brisbane. Should probably put sixty on North. <laughs> Shouldn't he? <Yeah. laughs> that's right. Isn't it? That's right. He's gonna Who break from Mitchell's yeah. record. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Janet, how about yourself, mate? Locked in any captaincy plans at the uh, moment? I'm very jealous of you boys for having Tom Green. Um, yeah, Green but group. if there's one if there's one team that needs to win this week, apart from Adelaide, I think Adelaide is one. I think the other team is the Bulldogs. For Beverage, they're playing the Suns at Mars yeah. Stadium. I think that Mark Spontapelli bounced back after... Uh, just as a team of really poor performance against Melbourne, uh, pig mentality, new member of the, a new uh, podcast member of the Dr. Supercoach. Um, Great man as is well. Very big on, is very big on this, is that captains, and uh, I've sort of been a proponent of this for a while as well, captains 
that have had a poor game, either themselves or the team in the previous week, like actual genuine team captains like your Sack Merritt, Bonds, Jordan Dawson, your Max Gorns. Much better. Max Gorns, exactly. Case in point. Much, much better in the following week to really uplift the team. And that's a really good sign of a good captain. Patrick Cripps has done in the past as well. And so I'm going to slap the VC on Bond. Um, I think even if Sarong is in the team, just because Spills, I think we've been a we've been a fan of this. Is you you got to get let your debutants settle into the team. You can't give them all the responsibility straight away. Um, as soon as they enter into your team, if if that's the case, so Sarong can just cruise along as a yeah. As a don't chuck him in the deep end too early. Don't yeah, okay. Yeah. That's why that's why I'm VCing him and not captaining him. So I think we're <laughs> for it. Yeah. Well, the captain, then, the captain's yeah. where you come undone. Oh, that's all right, mate. And then Sack Butters, I think he's a he's a good fallback option just in case Bond fails. Uh, plays Richmond again. I think it just it should suit him at the G. Uh, Richmond don't really tag or anything. Um, so yeah, we'll go Bond into Butters at the moment. Love it, mate. Well, guys, wow. we are very, very close to the two-hour mark. We said pre-podcast. DR, uh, keep this about an hour and 15 minutes, mate. Uh, Dennis, <laughs> out of the hosting chair, I'm in, and we've almost gone the two-hour mark, so I do apologise for that, fellas. Oh, Spilsy needs to get up early. Janet and I, we're busy, so we've been a long time as well, mate. But, uh, boys, it has been awesome getting back with you two legends. We've already talked about the launch or the upcoming launch for the supercoachswordplay.com website. Get around us there, guys. We've got heaps of merch coming out. Uh, plenty of stuff going on there. We won't talk about it now. We'll wait for... We might do a bit of a premiere or something, boys. We'll see what we're going to do there. But, uh, Legends, it was great to see you again. Wonderful to have a chat. Uh, Spills, before we let you go, mate, any last-minute advice to anyone that's listening or watching at the moment? Oh, you put me on the spot here. Um... I always say it, but like, just because everyone else is jumping on a particular player doesn't mean you have to. If there's someone that you like, like for example, I mean everyone's jumping on Jesse Hogan and uh, Tom Tom Barry, but they got their buyer coming up. So yeah, if you if you don't believe in the picks, I mean yeah, go for a go for a Dan Houston if you if you think of it left field, go for. Go for Ryan. I mean, I love them all as a pick. I think they're gonna be all right. So just back your gut and yeah. Yeah, don't do what I did and, and restructure my whole bloody team over the Amy series and butcher out my bloody whole ranking almost. So yeah, that's doesn't get much better than that advice wise, does it? I mean it's pretty bloody obvious, but uh, yeah, just pick who you want. Good. It's all, all fun at the game at the end of the day. So yeah, just pick the team you want and players that you enjoy watching. That's why I got Libra in my team, you know. There's better picks than Libra. I mean, there are much better midfielders at the time over round one than Libra. But I like Libra, so I'm going to run with it. Is what it is. Beautiful spills. Uh, Janeth, any last-minute advice for these wonderful, beautiful humans? Uh, I'll give. I'll go a bit philosophical with this one. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul. So don't... Go screwing around on one line in your team um, to fix another line because you're going to have to fix the line that you thought or that you broke the next week. So you just, it's just going to be a reiterative cycle. So don't um, try to avoid that. Um, but at the same time, I would think a boost. Use a boost if you want to upgrade your team. Otherwise, stick within your limits and just get that extra week of data. You, like we see how important one week of data is. Supercoach is a dynamically changing game. Who's the best trade in this week? Differs as well. So it's both subjective and dynamic. So that's my advice for it there. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul. I love it, mate. And I suppose I'll, I'll just finish. And I, I say this a lot. Remember that the season is not a sprint. It's a marathon. We've got so much more to come. And who knows what can happen in the one week. I remember last year, I did like a, a live review of my team and then oh, i'll find um, out that half me plays had gone down with hammies or injury i had no ruckman all of a sudden my ruck recovery <laughs> gone all the rest and look these things happen you manage to recover and at the end of the day i think one of you boys just mentioned it it is a game it's a free game that we love we enjoy we take it pretty seriously at the end of the day but there's lots worse things that happen in life than getting a bad super coach score for a week we're round one guys so if you like jack jones and 
thinking of deleting your site, just hold off the delete button for the moment, back yourself in for the next month, and I'm sure that you'll start to hit back with some decent scores. So, uh, guys, love chatting with you two again. Looking forward to next week already, and we'll see you soon in the next one. Good on you, lads. Cheers, Cheers boy. boy. Good luck this week.